Okay. Blast it off, mate. Blast it off, mate. Are you flying Boeing? I don't know, but I don't care, dude. Come on. Like, I'm not. Hey, what happened with the Don Lamont interview? My bad if you already addressed this. It's funny. Don Lamont literally DM'd me this morning. Here we go. Blasting off my... Uh, uh, Don just said, thanks. He replied to me and said, thanks. On Instagram. To the... Uh, to the story where I was like, Don Lamont in the building today. And I replied to him, it didn't happen though, Don. <laughs> you didn't come on. So what the... What do you mean? Thanks. Anyway, what are you? What are your thoughts on Somalia? Siad Bari, former Lion of the Horn. What are your thoughts on Fidel Castro? Be back, in, dude, 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 dude. Take a day off, okay? Take a day off. Recollect your thoughts. Take a take a day off. Recollect your thoughts. Come back on just an entirely different. Come back with an entirely different energy. Come back with an entirely different vibe because the vibe you're currently bringing to the table is absolutely unimaginably fucked. Okay. Not interested. Not interested. Every day there's a new one of these. Victor Vembanyama is unreal. Okay, dude. Okay. 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 Talk to me when uh, Alpera Schengen doesn't drop 45 on him directly, uh, making him a fraudulent individual. Okay. Dude was ban evading anyway. Clipped him at the start of your stream. Oh, nice. Um, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going through my watch history right now. So I can actually find all of the videos that I was slated to watch that I had a lot of fun ones on. Wonder if I can pull them up quickly and expeditiously, especially considering that I've like held on to them for a minute. And totally forgot about them. Fat shaming a streamer. Uh, Casio. When posting all your crimes on Snapchat comes back to haunt you. How the Latin Kings gangs actually works. How the how disposable vapes explain U.S. China tensions. Do you see the cosplayer who showed up to season two of Physical One Hundred as Zoro? Shut the fuck up. That is so sick. I'm a cosplayer and athlete. My name is Power Huyang. That's me. I joined Physical 100 because I wanted to show the world that there are cosplayers out there that are fit and take good care of themselves. Wait, what do you mean? Hella cosplayers are fit now. <laughs> Is that like a unique thing in Korea where they're like, what? A cosplayer who's fit? Why are you watching in English? I don't know. No, I'm not watching it. <laughs> it's in his mouth. Yeah, dude. It's called three sword style. Look it up, dumby. Excuse me. You're supposed to literally be in awe, okay? When you see the goat pull out the gat, okay? And put it directly in his mouth. You're not supposed to go, uh, why, is it, why is it in his mouth? Like, no, you're supposed to be like, oh my God. Oro, oro. They're laughing at him. He's so cool, and they're laughing at him. <laughs> no f***ing shot. There is no way this is a real tweet. I saw this. Grimes and Anima announced their relationship via Instagram. There's no way this is real, right? God damn it. Another Evan tweet. One Piece, communist, pro prison abolitionist, Elon obsessed, pro Palestine Jew, Altus ESSJ. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I feel like Evan's account is actually Megaphonics secretly. And Megaphonics is always in the replies, right? And I, I feel like it's actually Megaphonics' own account, and he's, like, replying to it with his other account so, so, that he can, so that he can basically act as though he's not constantly sending me Elon tweets by sending me Evan tweets instead. They're all Sanji stands. That's why they're laughing. It's absolutely disgusting and disgraceful. I agree. Um... Didn't Grimes already disown Trump or whatever? What do you mean disown Trump? He retweeted this. Elon did. Jeff Bezos' ex-wife giving most of 640 million donations to extreme left groups boosting migrant criminals and trans athletes. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, <laughs> probably not even true, but it would be so sick if it was. 
2D Cinderella says, will you ask Matt if I can be in one piece? I think I would make a good Nami if they need a backup. I'm ready to bust out my double Ds if needed. I don't know how to respond to this. Bro said harlot. True. Correct. Do you think that One Piece could be considered one of the greatest pieces of literature? I don't know. You didn't know and you went with that? I think I went with a pretty good one. Last person he called a harlot was my mom. <laughs> what is this? Since Puerto Rico is a possession of the U.S., there are usually U.S. flags all over. But today in San Juan, a group took down those flags. and replaced. Okay, bro. This is, like, not fun. Okay? I'm sorry. Like, I love you guys. But, like, give me something fun. Like, you're giving me literally the least fun Big dog, come on. Come on, chat. It's fun day. One day of the goddamn week. Two days out of the goddamn week. And you're like, no, I have to. I have to do. Not fun shit. And by the way, fun means whatever I consider fun. Okay? So sometimes that does, sometimes that does also mean like, obviously, cop videos or whatever the fuck. Like, it can be cop videos. Kamala went to Puerto Rico and was clapping along to a protest song, a song until her interpreter told her what the song was about. Okay, let me see this shit real quick. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, that shit does go hard though. Like, like why wouldn't you? I, I would be dancing to that too. If they were like, Hassan, fuck you, you piece of shit. I'd be like, no, this is a jam. Excuse me, have you thought about not making such a fucking sweet banger? Here you go. Now, nah, I'll be Didn't I, you're eating lunch already, bro? Didn't I just buy you breakfast? What the hell's going on here? You having a good day so far? Huh, okay. Marat's basically staying in my house while I'm gone. And there is, uh, <laughs> as, as far as Marat's existence here, there is a permanent noise that is coming from, uh, what is, what's on right now? Oh, the air compressor is on. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, it stopped. Yeah, apparently Kamala was uh, mindlessly dancing the songs, protesting her visit to the U.S. colony of Puerto Rico. Co uh, stops clapping once our aide translates it. We want to know, Kamala, what did you come here for? We want to know what you think of the colony. Uh, I, for one, think it's a fucking jam. So if you're going to make a jam, like, people are going to dance to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's fucked up. I, I think it's, it's valid. I think she's valid for clapping for that. Imagine those cops clocking in and getting their assignment. Okay, today you'll be playing security for um Kyle Rittenhouse. Yeah, they probably love it, dude. What do you mean? They're cops. People have this weird notion that like they think black cops are somehow gonna be less cop. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh yeah, no, totally, dude. <laughs> Famously. <laughs> Famously not the case. Okay. Why are they calling him out like a die work wear pose? Okay, dude. Hassan is a buy, is ready, locked and loaded. Like, he is slowly but surely becoming the megaphonics of sending me fucking cop videos. I swear to God. Every day, he's just sitting in there, okay, with his, like, one day I'm going to be a defense attorney ass, 
sitting in there just squeezing his shit, okay? Squeezing his shit, trying to get me to watch as many bad cop videos as we possibly can, okay? Just fucking locked and loaded, ready to fucking go. Sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're good. I, we've watched a bunch of his videos, okay? Respect. But it's crazy that he has like eight fucking videos ready to go, locked and loaded. He's like, oh, if you like this one, here's one. Here is a, you know, here's a thematic one. I have one for Australia themed. Uh, would you like my, here, take a look at my wares. Would you like an Easter themed cop video? Because I have that too. Anyway. Um, can we please watch this? Yeah, the Fern one, the kids who hacked the CIA. Uh, I've been meaning to watch this. I don't know anything about Fern. Are they like, are they chill with like watching their videos? Anyway. Um, what the fuck was I going to do? There was some stuff I wanted to do real quick. Unironically, this is a hilarious Easter cop video. Get the fuck out of here. This guy literally does have an Easter themed cop video. What the fuck is going on, bro? What the hell is going on? How do you have an Easter themed cop video? I was just kidding about this. Here's customer service me. Here's me yesterday. Ma'am, how dare you hang up on me? I hung up on you the first time because I will not tolerate being yelled at by someone. Mm -hmm. I'm the type of person who's going to match your energy. See, your generation has no respect for anyone. Well, I don't need to be lectured by someone born in 1930, sir. You can earn respect when you learn to respect others. Fake. I don't need to be lectured by someone. Fake. There's no way this is real. It's fake. 100%. Nope, this is just Zoomer bait. It's fake. Everything on TikTok is fake, but this is extra fake. Working in customer service, you need to rethink your career choice or job choice. Because you, you need to rethink the way- No dude born in 1930 is like that articulate in a moment of anger while shitting on, well, well, absolutely duking on what they perceive as a child on the other side of the fucking line. Fake. I mean, I, they're not, they're not actually born in 1980, but I mean, in, in 1930, the dude sounds like the dude sounds too much like a millennial to be saying like your generation is too lazy. Okay. Uh, like, yeah, I know. I know. J Cole came for Drake's meat. I mean, not J Cole. Sorry. Kendrick, the goat came for Drake's meat and he came for J Cole and everyone is fucking devastated. I, I here, let's watch. I know it's early, but Kendrick just J. Cole. Here's how J. Cole fans, when they rea react, react. Stupid ass. Come on. How J. Cole fans were when they heard the Kendrick diss on the new Metro album. He didn't come for his meat, he took it. Oh, yeah, that's man, what I'm saying. It's friendly competition, bro. No, no, it's not friendly this time, bro. bro what are you talking about? He really, they really dissed. They, they, he dissed them. He's about K. Dot? Yes. K Mr. Morale? Yes, him. Yeah. It's Mr. Morale, bro. He got morals and shit. That nigga not doing that shit for nah, real, bro. It's that's kidding why I around. Too. That's hey, why best I, friends, nigga. No, that's why I thought he the big stepper right now, bro. He really dissed him. Oh, my God, bro. Let me hear, bro. Damn, bro. You ready? Waking me up for this. Come on. Who, who, who beat is this? Uh, Metro. It's Metro beat. Metro and Future. Boy, Metro Future mm -hmm. and, and Kendrick Lamar jumping? Well, they just they just Drake too. Wait, wait. Yeah, play, yeah, play, yeah. Play, let me hear. Play. Yeah. Why that be so hard? I don't know. No, something not right. Something not right. This chat is so wide. That's why y'all riding K Dot like that. Really? Goat is wild. Yeah, dude. You're right. Yeah, it's a. Uh, White people love Kendrick Lamar. I mean, sure, white people do love Kendrick Lamar. But in a conversation where we're talking about fucking Drake, really? In a conversation between Drake, J. Cole, and Kendrick Lamar, who has a, a more... Who has an audience that is, is a larger percentage black audience is, is ridiculous. That's insane. You literally just compared a, a, a dude who did win... I think he won a Pulitzer, potentially. Was it a Pulitzer? He won, like, I know he won a Peabody. That's crazy that you just, like, said that, that you acted like Drake has a, has a blacker audience than Kendrick Lamar. It's crazy. <laughs> 
snatching chains and burning tattoos. It's up, not too many. Bro, please. Black Twitter thinks Kendrick's the king of the whites. Don't go there. White people are obsessed with Kenny. What do you mean? Mena and Desi fans are conflicted now. I think the... I think it's it's very... I think it's very silly, especially when you're talking about Drake. Drake is just a pop star. Drake is a pop star. His audience is, like, obviously going to be majority white because there's a majority of white people uh, in the English-speaking world. Like, his, his music is specifically for everybody. No, he's talking about Cole right there. He talking about Cole. Cole said he'd be walking around with a stick. No, it's up. It's up. No. To be fair, Wait, every, know. every rapper has a Because I knew something days. was up, bro. I knew something was up. I couldn't it's sleep it's right. No, nah, hell no. Nah. Man, what the fuck is the hillbillies doing, bro? No, nah, bro. PG Lane, bro. I'm falling, y'all. This is what you doing, bro. They want to jump and shit. We got, okay. Who is it? We got Cole. We got Drake. Shit. Uh, 21 there probably jump in, right? Maybe. I don't know. All of Dreamville. Bro, I'm, I swear to God, my man. Why people don't like Drake, Lamal Hassan? Wait, what? What is going on? I'm losing my fucking mind. What do you mean white people don't like Drake? What the fuck are you talking about? Drake is top 40. He's a top 40 hit maker. He does pop music. What the fuck are you talking about? You're, you have to have brain damage if you legitimately think that white people don't like Drake. What the fuck? Stop cheating and make a beat for everybody, bro. Something not right, bro. This is also such a, I mean, the way that we're having this conversation is so uh, painfully white in and of itself. I'm telling you, something not right. Don't even but, worry about it. I'm already leaving, bro. What? Ain't no big three. It's the big me. I know you heard it. Man, I'm telling you, bro. I'm Thank you. Mormons in Utah like Drake. Exactly. Exactly. You're absolutely 100% correct. Like, Drake makes music for literally every single person on the planet. Like mathematically, every single person on the planet. And he's very good at it for the record. White people love Drake as much as they like ignoring Chris Brown's domestic disputes, which is all the time. Cole coming back, Why is he bro. Call he's not ready to go back in. He's not ready to go back. Yes, he is. Yeah, you can go, bro. I'm telling you right now. You can go fight between your mouth, nigga. Damn it, the fucking shit ruined the friendship, bro. Come on, man. Naperville representing hard in the chat right now. I think here's my controversial take. All rappers have a majority white fan base. It's just majority white people in the English speaking world. All rappers have a majority white fan base. And the more mainstream you have an appeal, uh, the more white your uh, audience is. You didn't even watch the video arguing on some fake controversy? I, I actually did watch it earlier. <sighs> I didn't realize that, like, white people uh, hailed Kendrick Lamar as a hero or something. Like, I didn't know that that was a meta. I didn't know that that was a meme even. See, I'm not on my fucking uh, black Twitter game because I am not on Twitter anymore. So that's one of the downsides of... of that's one of the downsides of this process is that like, I just don't see a lot of the black Twitter discourse. Normally, normally I would know. Candace news hit you hard. Wait, what do you mean? What hit me hard about the Candace news? <laughs> bro, bro, bro's pulling out the last remaining $20 in his pocket to pay the fucking, to pay Letitia James. <laughs> uh, anyway. Trump is such a dumpy, he can't even fit a wallet. Lily Peach, you did you dirty. Wait, what? Why? Where am I? Oh, these are all the fan bases? Ugh. What do you think, dude? The one with the fucking tiny head, okay? The one with the tiny head. Which one is me? 
Yeah, it's right here, bro. It's right here. That 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 you see that? Yeah. Oh, does it make sense to you? Oh, good, good, Marat. Why are we the big hero six? I don't know. Right, hold on. Let me let me hit up Matt. See if he's like ready to go. If he's like lined up and ready to go. Same outfit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Chill. Bill Burr with the base takes time stamps. Parents. Oh my god! Hundred percent. That whole bullshit about of, the greatest generation. Yeah. And then everybody just uh, 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 the greatest what? Because Tom Brokaw said it. One guy says that, and then that becomes the greatest generation. If you look at where race relations were, the greatest generation. He's talking about world. I like that. I like that we have uh, a, a moderator battle in the chat. The Bill Maher stand getting upset. Because Bill Burr, the better Bill, is being represented in the chat. And the Bill Burr stand is excited, you know, for having the obvious take on the Bills. In the battle of the Bills, there's not even a real battle, okay? It's not even a fucking war because it's completely one-sided. Like, Bill Burr is the goat. Bill Maher is not even the giraffe. Bill Maher is the goat shit, okay? Sucks. What? No, this is Bill Burr, my goat. I love him. One day, one day, one day he will be Billy Boy. How are ya? One day he's going to be on a fucking broadcast, dude. One fucking day, dude. Got the white boy saying inshallah, dude. The strongest Bill lover in the history versus the strongest Bill lover now. World War II, simultaneously, like, segregation was going on. Brutal segregation. Top of the charts. Yeah. <laughs> Top of the charts segregation, right? And it's just like, yeah, and he's sitting there. It's a very compartmentalized white way of looking at a certain moment in history. And just yeah, being I like, these were guys great. Were, were the great. Everyone always says Bill Mar. Uh, I mean, not Bill Mar. Sorry, Bill Burr would hate you. Don't fuck it up like Ethan. I don't think I would. I think we would fucking vibe. Like, I legitimately believe that we would vibe super hard. You're saying cope, but like, I do legitimately think. Like, why wouldn't we get along? We agree on so much. We agree on so much. Well, maybe with the information they had or whatever, but there was a lot of things that were going on back then that uh, that weren't great. A lot of great. things that that are coming back, like you just saw in Ar like in Arkansas, they made it okay for a 13 year old to go work in a factory. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna fire their parents that are full time with benefits, and then you got to compete with your own kid. They they have so exhausted sweatshop it, labor. Every time he starts talking, is literally a, a Hasanabi spit sesh. Okay. Every time he starts talking about labor, labor rights, every time he starts talking about politics is basically fucking literally a one-to-one -one verbatim, same ass fucking take, same ass fucking opinion. This is why I think like we would get along. He's a lurker in the chat. No, I think he's unfortunately like a Jimmy Doorhead or something, but it's fine. I don't give a shit. He can be a Jimmy Doorhead. Who gives a fuck? As long as he's got the good takes. And not like Jimmy Dore's bad takes. You know what I mean? Do you think he'd enjoy your how are you impression? Probably. Listen. I was a pit bull dog dad. He is a pit bull dog dad. I grew up listening to his fucking silly ass podcast that he still does to this day where he just is alone and spitting. The Monday morning podcast top tier podcast how does he do it i don't even know i i don't even understand on wednesday you both mauled exactly the same yeah because he's a very influential person in my life dude that's why a lot of you guys watch me and are influenced by the things i say by the things i believe i am influenced by his style for sure because i love him i think he's fucking hilarious he's hilarious he's he's uh, very empathetic. He's just the goat. Around the world. He is as if Lennon was from Massachusetts. That's so funny. And we've all ignored it here because it didn't mm -hmm. affect us. And that, now they're going to they're gonna bring it back here. But it's not going to work. 
It's you not ever gonna look work. up how much child labor there was in the early 1900s? I remember reading horrible stories about uh, debtor's prison, whole families being in there, no way of getting out, and then also like, you know, eight-year-olds like doing in the 1800s during the like the. He's not a Jimmy Dore stan. He's just friends with Jimmy Dore because of comedy for like 15 years. He's based because of his wife. Yeah, his wife is, I think, his friendship with Patricia O'Neill, and I think his wife is like genuinely the uh, played a major role in his understanding of the world. He's great. The between. Well, I love. I love. The... I love what they call like the robber baron. Yeah, the era. lovely Nia, everybody. Like that ever ended? Yeah. I'll tell you nothing that's really fucking annoying the shit out of me right now is that fucking expression tech bro mm -hmm. tech bro so they they can't take nerds never nerds are like women they never get blamed for anything so tech bro makes it frat boy adjacent like there's some fucking bro with his hat backwards it's like frat guys they that was an individual like hurting of human beings what these fucking nerds do and what they have created and how little they value they've devalued like art so now we're all working and it's like with each like the, the pool just keeps shrinking and shrinking and shrinking and these oh, tech so bros good. no these fuck anyway i love him specifically because like you know how yesterday we were talking uh with with david maklovich of chromio and he has a very specific style and he has a very um he has a very like uh specific way of speaking and he was talking about how he wants to convince people who are still like liberal zionists to like uh, see the light on Israel, things of that nature. David can speak to an audience that will not be receptive to me. Even though we have very similar shared values. And I see the exact same thing with Bill Burr. Bill Burr can speak to the broadest audience. An audience that will never be receptive to me. An audience that will despise everything that I stand for even though the reasons for why they despise it, Bill Burr literally has the exact same opinions on, and, and simultaneously, he is literally wealthier than I am. But he gets to say these things in a beautiful way that a lot of people will be receptive to, and I respect that, because the aesthetics are, are very different. He comes across like a fucking everyman, you know, like a common guy. Just don't bring up his family. That's what soured things with Ethan. Wait, well, I, what, what, what happened with his family? I don't know anything about his family. I only know Nia. That's it. But I would never, if I had the opportunity to talk to him, uh, I would talk fucking about nerd. his politics. Like I talk about the shit that pisses him off. Common guy over uh, Hamas and Abi. Exactly. Chad is at the best. Your biggest strength and your weakness is your compassion. Yeah, he's way richer than you, but didn't call himself a socialist, so nobody says his money is hypocritical. Exactly. And I hope he never does. And I don't think he will. Bill Burr and Ethan are fine. They literally did a second interview. Yeah. So. I doubt he's interested in a full politics set down. Okay, why, is, why are chatters being parasocial in my fucking parasocial-ass community about Bill Burr? and what his opinions might be in a fucking future interview that is never going to happen while simultaneously comparing it to an interview that did happen with uh, Ethan, okay? Like, I don't understand what's going on here. Let's watch a Victor Vambayama uh, post and, and, you know, move on from this fucking silly-ass conversation. It's, like, pissing me off a little bit right now. That's, an, that's just, like, it looks like he's playing against children this is what it looks like when you literally he didn't even jump bro it looks like this is a full-grown adult playing against kindergartners that is insane oh my god oh my god look at this bro casually fucking Starts jumping from the free throw line. What the fuck? And I can't even call it a jump. It's like more of, he just like, he just vertically, he vertically flew in the direction of the fucking, of the rim.
Like, he didn't even jump. He hopped. He skipped. Bro skipped. And he yammed it. Don't care. Jokic better. Jank 2024. I don't understand how you could just, like, skip to the rim. It is so weird. He leaned down. Yeah. <laughs> Wemby has to look down when he's dunking. He moves IRL like I'm moving my dreams. He literally moves like a nightmare, dude. What do you mean? He's so long, it looks like he's underwater when he's moving. And the only reason why is because while he is fast, he looks slow because he's got long-ass fucking shit. His long-ass shit is like physically moving while he is actually as fast as the other players. He physically looks like he's moving slower because it takes a long ass time for your eyes to like comprehend what is happening. Look at this. Yeah, he's like a like a visual illusion. Pick up games in Sydney, bro. I'd love to play games in. Uh, I'd love to play pick up games in Sydney, bro. I'd love to do that, bro. Three points from the logo. To Victor. That's cr okay, dude. Bro, bro, that's a half court shot. He's doing trick shots. That makes no sense. Back to Victor. You know what it is? It's a catapult. Okay? It's a catapult. It's because his arms are so fucking long. It's literally like a trebuchet. He didn't even jump on it. He scores! Oh, that's a good sign. Yeah, he has the physics of a fucking trebuchet, dude. Look at his shot. Here he is, intimidating two players on a fast break. No way. No way. That's crazy. That is crazy. Bro, they look like children. Conquerors hockey. Brother, that is incredible. Hassan, in your Insta merch ports, did you buy the Salem hat from Grailed? I was going to buy it, but it was sold before I could. And now you're wearing it. Sad. No, I didn't. I don't own a Salem hat. I actually, uh, I actually wore it because my photographer at the shoot, at the photo shoot was wearing it. And I was like, oh, that's, you know, I love, I love Jack Donahue. Uh, let me fucking, let me rock this, let me rock this hat. A likely story? Why would I make this up? <laughs> this is the most basketball Hassan has watched in years. I mean, I play basketball myself, so I technically do watch a lot of basketball when I'm playing, but I don't fucking, like, actually watch NBA ever. I don't care, personally. It's weird, I know. Uh, all right. Um, we have... We have a little bit of time before I get, he has more blocks than a lot of teams this season. Makes sense. I mean, look at him. He's like, he's got like a fucking built in defense mechanism. Um, we have Northern Ireland's dark pass explained. Don't know if I want to watch that. I'll be honest. Um, we got Geopold, Africa explained. We have cop videos. A racist cop doesn't realize he's being recorded. And the kids who hacked the CIA. And I kind of want to watch the racist cop who's being recorded. We can start off with the, when posting all your crimes on Snapchat, come back to haunt you and a racist cop. Will you quit moving? Stop this is Officer Ashlyn Plough, and she just punched this black woman in the face. What's worse is that this is a pattern for her, and she's well known to use excessive force on people of color. Up to this point, she and her department have gone unpunished, but there are countless cases of racist officers who forget they're being recorded, like when a cop repeatedly shouts slurs at an innocent black man. Oh, for being 
But first, let's look at a cop who did something so racist, it got him fined. I mean, dude, a cop getting fined for being racist is like Wemby getting fined for blocking too much, okay? This is their job. So I don't really understand how the fuck that happens. Like, what do you mean? They don't even get fucking desk duty for... They get promoted for killing people, which is, I feel like, the most racist thing you can do. It doesn't make sense. $100,000 and fired from the police force. Yeah, the other cops were like, <laughs> bro was too good at his job. The other cops and the fucking... The other cops were, like, jealous of how racist... His racism powers were too high. They were like, dude, come on. Cut it out. Save some for the rest of us, dude. You are literally inventing new slurs that we did not know existed. Nerf this man. Entirely. Hey, I'm black out here. That's what the issue is. Yeah. The incident happened in San Diego when he approached Amari Johnson for smoking in a non-smoking area. The only problem, Johnson didn't have a lighter, cigarette, or vape on him. Even if he was smoking, do you think that warranted this treatment? I mean, to be fair, when I see that mustache, when I see that fucking fade, and that mustache, it's Jover, okay? Like, I am 100% profiling that dude, and, and immediately, immediately, that, that's a racist guy. What did you grab me for, bro? I already told you, just coming straight. You look goofy as hell, bro. Stop Sit touching down. me, bro. Obviously, yeah, nobody's going nowhere. Smack hey, 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 what I tell you? Sit I told down. you I'm waiting for somebody to come here. Okay. They right here, bro. Sit down. Oh, oh my God, you're tough as up. Hey, you tough as Stop. Hey, Stop. Stop. Bro, bro you goofy as hell, bro. Hey, Mr. Dadges, you making a big ass deal out of nothing, brody. You're the one that you making a big ass deal out of nothing. To be fair, if I saw somebody wearing a Toon Squad jersey of LeBron, I would probably have a similar reaction. Like, I, I obviously. I, like, I probably would have a similar reaction. I'd be like, what are you doing? Like, are you okay? Are you. Are you. You, you seem to be in like a, like a di stressful situation. Like, are you experiencing mental distress? Because as much as a fucking LeBron dick rider, I am, I am le dick rider. As you guys know, the one area where I do not ride that dick is, you know, he was just, I mean, that movie was, was terrible. Brody. Wow, seems Hassan took his reasonable meds today. No, I've consistently told you that Space Jam 2 is fucking ass cheeks. Me and my 32-year-old like 10 year best friend christopher motherfucking defalco sat our old asses down he's literally a finance guy like an adult okay we sat our old asses down two la dick riders side by side we both love lebron and we could not fucking get through this movie i know it's for children but i thought my own personal love for this man would let me watch this show, watch this movie. No. And honestly, again, we are both two adults who dick ride LeBron endlessly. That's how we arrived at the conclusion that we should sit our asses down and watch Space Jam 2 to begin with. His acting is really bad. Have you seen the first one? Of course. What do you mean? It was like age appropriate when I was a child. It was made for me, basically. Are you real big though, huh? Dude, hey, you real big. The one that just hey, hey, you real big. Sit down. Hey, you real tough. Okay. Thank you, bro. Thank you. I have no reason to be detained by you. The first one's also dog shit. No, it's not, dude. What the fuck? Maybe because I was a kid, but it was not dog shit. Bro, sit down. Bro, stop. Stay seated. Get on the ground. Bro. What am I doing? <laughs> Y'all are funny as hell, bro. This is funny as hell, bro. Hey. Hey, hey let me start you. That's hey, fine, dude. At, 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 you you've already, put, my, you've already put your hands on me. Bro, I didn't put nothing on you, bro. It's on camera, so you can check okay. me. Bro, y'all okay. hella goofy, bro. I'm talking to you, and you smacked me. Bro, nobody what? smacked you, bro. Why <laughs> I smack you? You did it? <laughs> you smacked me. Cops, cops just assume. Like, he, cops are... I, In my mind, I believe he genuinely believes that. He's so racist that he thinks, like, being... In the presence of a cop, as a black person, you're automatically being physically violent. Sages claims that this treatment was because Johnson slapped his hand away, a moment not clearly caught on his body cam. What the f bro? Do y'all know what's going on? 
I just got here, man. This fool is in the f***ing wrong. He tried to come up on him like he's not doing shit. He's waiting for me to get back from the store, right? When I come back, instead of him just apologizing... Oh, for the record, if you're in San Diego or Orange County, as a black person, you should have a, a, a white guy uh, vouch for you, 100%. This is not even a joke. This literally used to happen to me and one of my very good friends, Tomei. We would go to fucking bars okay i've talked about this story before we would go to bars in orange county and they would literally fucking not let him in they would literally not let him in he'd have a hat on they'd be like oh you can't come in with the hat and it's like i have a hat on you just let me in he's with me what the fuck yeah it's not even it's like a joke how fucking openly racist they are straight up dress code only allowed o dress code is only enforced on black people straight up unless that black person is a designated white guy who will get mad as fuck i hate how huntington beach is so bad with it and i'm from there yeah 100 percent. and it's kind of weird what are you doing in oc in the first place ghetto ass place <laughs> i mean we 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 need to we were looking for a change of scenery but yeah a lot of orange county places are like that it's very very weird aren't they all liberals <laughs> fuck no dude orange county is not liberal at all dude it is not even remotely liberal you're crazy that's where all the fucking freaks are that's where all the anti-vaxxer rallies are and shit is conservative as hell and so is, is parts of san diego too you got clanty Santi, also known as Clanty, literally a hotbed for clan activity. I mean, it's, yeah, Orange K -K 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 County is right. And being like, oh, you're right, I get it. Yeah. He tries to grab. Yeah, non Californians thinking it's all libs out here is so funny because, like, California has more Republican voters than, like, multiple red states combined. Okay? There are. 4 million Republican voters, which means there's probably a lot more people who are conservative that don't even fucking vote, okay? 4 million Republican voters in the motherfucking state, okay? That's like 4 Republican states worth of Republicans. Do you understand? It's just washed away by how much, uh, like, how, how big our big cities are, and when you live in a big city... You oftentimes, uh, you know, move out, move on from that kind of reactionary thinking. The less segregated the areas you live in are, like the more you're around, you know, black and brown people, the less you are likely to vote Republican. Straight up, that's all it is. It's, it's kind of that simple. It, it seems so stupid, but it really is that. Grab him and choke him and put him on the thing. Obviously, the, my friend is gonna put his hands back. This fool's in the wrong, and he could just say that and let it go. And instead, he's trying to. I don't know what. He's well, trying just to do, trying bro. to figure out what's going on there. Bro, he's being a whole ass, bro. Oh God, and you know you're wrong, bro. This guy would be an awful lot more helpful if he wasn't so aggressive, but he's exactly right. Johnson was simply waiting for him to arrive in this spot when he was approached by Dages and was exhibiting no suspicious behavior whatsoever. But in the conversation that followed, he accidentally reveals the true reason for this stop. He looked at my name like 30 minutes ago, bro. Why am I still here? I don't got nothing on me. I'm doing nothing wrong. I'm being a citizen. So, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's, why, I'm, that's why I'm frustrated. It's not a tell. I'm sitting outside for no reason. You know what I'm saying? You really don't get it, though. You don't get it. It's, I understand it's cool. that you're I'm, I, feel like I, I understand that you're being empathetic. I, I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? But you don't get it, bro. I already know what it is. Hey, I'm black and out here. That's what the issue is. Yeah. I get it. Dage is agreeing to this almost seems like a joke. Even if this was... I mean, he's being sarcastic, but he got got. You know what I mean? Especially because you are doing that for that reason. So you don't have the opportunity. Like... You don't, you don't get to be sarcastic in that moment because you are literally doing the racist thing, okay? You can't be, like, doing a hate crime in the process of being like, yeah, sure, sure, I'm doing a hate crime because you're black. It's like, well, you are doing it. 
draws a sarcastic comment, it speaks volumes that this is something he feels comfortable joking about. If the cops let it go at this point, all might have been forgiven. Johnson was understanding and the female officer was polite, but they just decides he's not finished and moves. Yeah, especially with these vibes, okay? If you're looking like Andrew Schultz out here and you're not on a diverse podcast with a diverse set of hosts, okay? You're just, you know, you can't, I'm sorry, you can't look like a bomber pilot from World War II as a cop wearing, he, he also has like the Under Armour on too, like, and it's like fucking 80 degrees out there in San Diego. Like, he's just, he, his vibes are abysmal, okay? The only person who's allowed to do that is Andrew Schultz, and the only reason why he gets away with it is because... He has a Jewish co-host, he has an Indian co-host, and he has a black co-host on the podcast. If it was four white guys, you'd be like, this is fucked up. Is this a Gavin McGinnis show? Like, what the fuck's going on here? That's it. You look like you put on a racism uniform on your face with this. He's in to arrest him. So listen to me. You're being placed under arrest for 241C, okay? Yep. All right. What's the 241C? Assault on a peace officer. Assault on an officer. Hey. Okay. Bet. Bet. Hey. Bro, you are a whole ass bro. Hey. Oh, hey. God. <laughs> you are a whole ass bitch, bro. On oh, God. See? He had the he had the white backup too, but unfortunately the white backup came too late. This is like This should be a service offered to Offered to uh, to black people like a like a white buddy service, you know what I mean? In in areas like this. <laughs> hey, call Jerry! Hey, call Jerry! Hey, Nick, call Jerry! Fucking five cops, dude! I insane for <laughs> being black while sitting on the sidewalk. <laughs> you're a, bro. You a straight bitch, bro? Yeah. Hey, you except for I, you're the one that hit me. Bro, I didn't hit you, bro. You started grabbing me, bro. I told you to stop touching me, bro. You know what I'm saying? I saw the police officer. You know it's on film, right? It's how far you think this is gonna go? Hope you don't shoot me in this back of his car or some shit. Cause you guys are f corrupt officers. You're for sure a corrupt. As f Cause I'm not fucking in the back of his yeah. car in the first place. Sages searches Johnson, then sits him in the back of his patrol car before taking him away to be charged. He also allegedly lied on his police report, saying that he observed Johnson smoking and that he took a fighting stance when he was approached. But Johnson wouldn't stand for this and decided to sue the city of La Mesa and Dages himself, citing excessive yeah. force and wrongful arrest. Hell Around yeah. a yeah, look at this bitch, by the way, shaving his fucking... City of La look, Mesa and look, Dages himself. Look at this bitch shaving his mustache. Okay? Yeah, you think you're slick, dude. You think your ass is slick, dude. Oh, yeah? We didn't catch you, we didn't catch you on camera looking like that? He's like, hey, guys... That was a different guy who he was a much more racist looking guy. Self citing excessive force and wrongful arrest. Around a month into the lawsuit, La Mesa agreed to pay a sum of $125,000 to Johnson. None of this money would come out of Dage's pocket, but he was swiftly fired from the La Mesa Police Department just two years after he joined. Ashlyn Pluff, however, punched a black woman in the <laughs> Folks, these, guys, these police departments are getting too woke. How did that guy have that much clarity of mind while being detained by a fucking ugly bitch power tripping cop? Incredible. I mean, he's probably not his first rodeo. Let's be real. So, yeah. And of course, he probably got rehired for the record. You know, guys like that, guys like that have, uh, there, there's plenty of use for him in, uh, in the force somewhere else in the face and her entire police department were just as bad and were all caught clearly on camera. You know, before there were bi cameras, I wonder how many sergeants would just light this thing up, oh, like yeah. empty this tank. <laughs> Ashland's police department were dispatched to a house party in Toledo, Ohio. Oh brother, oh brother, we got Ohio. Oh, oh man, here we go. One of my favorite places to mention randomly. Toledo, Ohio. Of course, dude. Of course. That's shocking. So shocking. It's like so expected. Like the top of the hour ad break at the top of the fucking hour. You know what I'm saying? Three minutes of ads. It's coming. You should expect it. Now, of course, you can prepare against it. Uh, Toledo, Ohio. Don't know if a white buddy works in this circumstance. Let's be real. The racism game has been elevated. Okay? They, they, got, they, got, newer, they got newer levels of racism. A higher tier of racism out there. Okay. 
Like, we're talking not even Cleveland, okay? You're cooked. You're so cooked at that point. Yeah, new, new racism difficulty. White buddy will not save you in this situation. Okay? Will not. Uh, Winter Rose 96, thank you for the 10 gifted subs, allowing 10 people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. Let's go. The racist mustache cop went on TV to claim that the left is after him. Well, in May of 2020, video of the arrest of a black at your home. Talk to me about what happened at your home. Oh, God. Fucking, I don't even want to watch. It's going to make my blood boil. I hate this shit. Here's a three-minute ad break now, by the way. No. Guests at the house weren't causing a disturbance, okay. and they didn't seem violent or rowdy whatsoever. So when the cops decided to move in to arrest them seemingly at random, it raised serious alarm bells. Hey, who lives here? Who's the owner I can talk to? Who lives here? This ain't got nothing to do with us. I'm asking who lives here. You do? Yeah. All right. Arrest him, 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 and them too. Hey, you can't go in my house. Watch out. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. I ain't even do that to What are you doing? Why are you pushing me off the corner? Get out of the don't stay back. Don't stay back. Failure to disperse. Failure to disperse, everybody. The cop tells them that they're getting charges of failure to disperse. And in the state of Ohio, this charge can only be given out when the suspect's presence creates a high likelihood of physical harm or public inconvenience. In this scenario, the cop is clearly just looking for a way to get the guests in cuffs. All right, let's just in the back of cars. Okay. okay, I'll explain to you. I stood here and I told everybody to go in the house. You didn't tell Listen, me. You didn't are you going to let me explain or are you going to yes, talk sir. over me? I stood here. I told everybody in here either go in the house or, or leave. After I said that, nobody moved. I said you're going to jail if you don't move. Nobody moved. The precise reason that nobody moved might be difficult for this cop to comprehend, but it's actually because he never asked anyone to go inside the house. He simply asked who lived there and then started arresting people. It should also be noted that if this call was for public disturbance, the commotion has increased dramatically since the police arrived, and it almost seems like they're the ones that caused it. But if you think the cops are about to stop there, you're dead wrong, as this officer decides to take out his weapon to threaten the residents. Guys, let's go! Are you... Is that a paintball gun? Time to move! Let's go! Who else wants to go to jail? Because they're about to go. Go! Go! Why don't you listen just go home? I don't have patience. People go to jail when I'm around. You know, before there was body cameras, I wonder how many stars would just light this thing up, like, oh, yeah. empty this tank. Bro, you're on body camera fantasizing about it. Hello? Justified for a noise, justified on a noise complaint, to be honest? Dude, you are out of your mind. Was it a noise complaint? Seems like a proportionate response. For a noise complaint, you think like beating the shit out of people and like pepper balling them is, is valid? The fuck do you think is going on, dude? You think it's a fucking riot? You think it's January 6th? These snarky remarks from the cop are frankly terrifying as he's essentially admitting he'd open fire on everyone here if he had the opportunity. He's drunk on power and he's not the only one. Ashlyn Pluff is also on the scene doing exactly the same thing, only her story ends in an even more violent manner. You're not walking back up to that house, turn back around. Sarcasm, what the fuck? Oh, dude, well put a fucking slash S on here, man. Jesus Christ, how am I supposed to know you're being sarcastic? Chatter, stop baiting. I already ran the top of the hour ad break. Hey, no, you can't test I can take your ass to jail. I don't give a f Failure to disperse. Get the f out now. Go! Failure Tensions are clearly extremely high right now. However, what makes the following footage even crazier is that the girl we're about to meet is professional boxer O'Shea Jones, an Olympic-level athlete who should be respected and admired for her talents. But instead, she was assaulted, plain and simple. Back up! All right, I want to interrupt this real quick. I want to interrupt this real quick to tell you something very funny. Um, the latest Schizzarella post, okay? As always, Schizzarella goes into the fucking sh uh, shop and just cooks up the, the absolute worst. Can, we, can, you, can you show me the XUC Schizzarella post real quick? Uh, can, can a chatter pull it up? I can't find it right now. Huh. Okay. Why am I bringing this up? 
breaking. French Canadian streamer Ecstasy brought a sister on stream and ended up kissing her passionately, eyes closed in parentheses. Why isn't Twitch banning him for this behavior? Now, normally, oh. normally, uh, here. Okay. Yeah, Obviously, sure. this is not XGC's sister. Uh, very funny that she posted this. It's got 6,000 likes. Why am I bringing this up? Because my fucking normie friends are text messaging me in my group chat going, what the fuck is wrong with XQC? Don't you know this guy? Why is he making out with his sister? I'm losing my mind, dude. Ah! Oh, no. This clip is like a year old, too. Is that for real, sister? No, man. What? Or nor. She's been harassing AB's family and farming your community. Who? Who's harassing AB's family? What? Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I just, like go, one I just go glazy eye. Excuse me, is just Dennis Prager head? What's your argument against adult incest? What do you mean? I gave it to her. She ate it because I am a good dog dad, a good dog uncle to Fiona. Okay, well, I'm just saying that it is the truth. When I fed her, she ate it. And she would have eaten more, too, by the way. I think you can give her even more food. Uh, I don't think you should feed her from that bowl, by the way. You should use a dog bowl. I think that's part of the reason why she doesn't eat it when you feed her from that bowl. This Misha person is always doing weird shit like that. Stop boosting this person. Destiny thinks it's okay for a brother and sister to kiss, but his wife can't kiss another man? What? What the fuck is this? There's literally nothing wrong with this. Brothers and sisters kiss like this all the time. Don't make it weird. Oh, he's like leaning into the troll. No English. No, I'm just doing the task. Get him the task. Give him a little kiss on the cheek. I, th I think I, I also have to put some after. Oh, okay. oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm not okay with it. Ew, you licked it. Who okay, licks? It's kind of wild that like, um, they were married. And uh, the person speaking and this guy is, is now very different. <laughs> very different people. And also, simultaneously, I believe, banned, too. <laughs> Everything I learned about this man is against my motherfucking will. All right, let's continue. You go! Best no! Ever! I'm asking for his I best hair! Back up! Nim is still Nim, yes. I'm asking for his best uh, Greek might not have been banned. Uh, I don't know. Do that banned? I think he was banned for a little bit, but he's back. What is wrong with y'all? You can't do that to her phone. Back up. Okay, give me her phone. Okay, that's her phone, so you yes. gotta keep it. No, you're not giving your phone to anyone. Then stop moving. Hey, hey, Calm hey. down. You angry. Stop She's angry. All I'm saying, she's squeezing my hands for no reason. Will you quit moving? Stop cussing at me. She just hit me. Y'all just see that? Anna! She just hit me. Anna! She just hit me. Ma'am, 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 ma'am. She just hit me. You see that? I got it. I got it. I got it. Right here, right here. Just, just Toledo, Ohio activities, dude. Straight up on body camera, too. Olympic pop. I go. am. I asked for your badge number. Oh, mine? You were talking about mine? Yeah. It's 355. Five. There's no way to justify this attack. O'Shea was surrounded by officers and restrained, and Ashlyn punched her for no reason other than anger and hatred. However, unlike the officer from before, it seems that Ashlyn had completely failed to consider the fact that every cop here was equipped with a body cam, and she was in plain view of all of them. But in a tragic twist of fate, prosecutors found this use of force to be justified. They posit- Wow. Wow. Guys. Guys, shocked, 
let me tell you how shocked I am that when the police were policing their damn selves, they found out that the police were simply policing in a situation where they definitely policed a little too hard. It that O'Shea was resisting arrest and the punch was a compliance technique. Instead, she was verbally reprimanded for her use of profanity in the incident, but received no criminal charges. But there's no better example of racism than yelling racial slurs at a suspect, and that's what Officer Tim Garcia was caught doing. Yeah, it's called a compliance technique when you fucking punch someone in the back of the head, which is illegal in the UFC, by the way. Like, illegal in boxing, illegal move in the UFC. It's it's like directly you're you're basically creating a situation where you you could kill someone or concuss them instantly. Okay. By the way, O'Shea Jones won bronze medal in the last Olympics, yet she got treated like this. That is crazy. Doing on July 14th, 2018. The suspect, Dwayne Robinson, was allegedly getting aggressive and confrontational with mall patrons using vulgar language and threatening them. After Robinson was asked to leave, he complied, but the guards continued to follow him and eventually detained him. They were like, you understand? I said, look, man, I, look, I went like that. I said, look, y'all already told me what it was. I was like, I'm already walking up. Okay. So I, I tried to go back that way. I was like, I thought there was an exit, and they grabbed my bag. I said, look, man, don't grab my bag like that. Yeah. All they had to tell me was like, look, sir, there's not an exit over here. Yeah. And it was like, all right, we want you to exit the mall. I was like, look, man, I'm not about to exit the mall, bro. Mm -hmm. I said, look, I want the cops to come here to let y'all know the dumb yeah. y'all doing. Yeah. But look, I ain't even did nothing. To recap, Robinson has basically said that he was confused why security asked him to leave, but he complied until they started to get physical with him. He then asked them to alert police to try and work everything out. But as it turns out, this would be a huge mistake. The cop would soon turn out to be not just rude, but derogatory and insulting. Now, my, my question to you is, if they, they tell you to leave the mall, are you going to leave the mall? No, I don't want to. That's okay, what I'm well, I understand you don't want to, but if they tell you, are you going to leave the mall? Okay, they don't have to tell you. If they don't want you here, you're not here, okay? That makes no sense. Okay, here's the deal. Now you're going to get argumentative with me. They won't put you in jail. I'll put you in jail. So, we cool on that? Yeah. Okay, cool. You have your ID? Let me just get your information. I'm going to get their information. All right, then so, we'll all right, be up. Y'all take my information. But, like, they're talking about they want to give you a criminal trespass. Yeah, they might give you a criminal trespass. Look, I ain't even did. Cops are so funny in the way that they just, like, try to justify being annoyed with like legalese and they just don't know anything about the law so they'll just like make it up on the spot they'll be like uh sir uh you might if you keep this up you might get under arrest for being a nuisance in uh being a nuisance to a law enforcement officer actually in plain clothes and it's like you just made that up like you not not a single part of the things that you just brought up is like the law okay being annoying to a cop is not illegal you know what i mean Why you me trim yeah. excuse me you're under arrest for being a silly goose <laughs> yeah uh matt's here by the way what you mean bro? what you mean they can't yeah no nah, hold on what you mean no. they you're under arrest for being a meanie bobini sir to me and and hurting my feelings like my wife did my bitch ass wife deborah ex-wife on our on our uh saturday fun day we are doing what more normal people do for fun which is watch yep. police being racist uh you know National just past time. Ra racist cop videos where we make fun of cops um ladies and gentlemen matt owens is the building uh the the showrunner for the live action one piece on wow. netflix uh last time we were here we were not allowed to talk about uh your your accomplishment we were not we were not allowed to talk about it because there was uh obviously a writer strike going on uh this time we can talk about it specifically i personally loved it and thank you and uh i'm very excited to have you here again and and you know uh, dive into some weeb shit thanks for having me back yeah thanks for coming on you got yeah yeah, yeah. you got the dragon ball you got the, the got dragon ball on deck got to wrap got, it you, look at his dude look at look at matt's shoes you you brought them Look at his shoes. Where do you purchase You guys remember these? the the Vans? Vans did a collab, like, this was maybe two or three years ago. Um, and I bought probably five pairs of shoes. 
It's so fire. Someone said I got the Robin pair. Same. There's like a they're like purple low tops with Robin's uh bounty poster photo on them. They're clean as hell. Yeah. Oh my god. Like favorite pair of shoes. They're on stock eggs. I know people talking about the Puma drop. Dude, it was I got up this morning and as I'm sure was the case with a lot of you, gone immediately. Of course. So hard to get in there. So Shout out to anybody that actually was able to cop a pair. Holy shit, this dude is a bigger weeb than you. I love it. Yeah, I don't know if you know this, but like he he has the he has the v, uh, the weeb bona fides. Yes, I think I feel like when you when you when you literally do like when you commercialize and and uh, introduce to the Western world a very important piece of uh, weeb work, you you've officially become the top weeb. He is a professional weeb. I am. Yeah. I've made it a career. I'm very lucky. Yeah, he personally knows Oda. So, on a first name basis with Goda. He's the guy. Yeah. Um Burn Bridges, thoughts on the Avatar live action series? He's not going to say <laughs> burn, he's not going to say something burn, burn wrong, bad about that. Come on, dude. No, 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 no. It's, it's good. It's decent. It's not like Look, it's one it's um it's Netflix family. I'm I'm proud of them. Uh really proud of them. Shout out to the showrunner Albert Kim. He's a good dude. Um, One Piece clears, but it's fine. That, <laughs> I, look, I that's not that. for me to decide. That's not for me that. to decide. I, as a watcher, I can say that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ask him about chapter one. Oh, you mean the chapter that solidified that Mr. Three is one of the strongest characters in the entire series now? You mean Wait, that okay, chapter? Okay, okay, okay. No spoilers, please. What is happening that's right not now? A, it's, that's not a real spoiler. That's okay. just some power scaling bullshit. Okay. Um, One Piece cosplay stream with Robin, Zoro, and Boa Hancock. Wait, what? Who? What is this? You just... Oh, wait. Is this happening this right, right now? now? Oh, my wait, God. Wait, doing that right now? <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. That yeah. Rate the, rate the cosplays. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah. I, mean, I can only see Zoro so I far. I mean, Boa looks good no, so far. Feel that if she sitting, sitting down. Okay. My, my Zoro kind of clears. I'm going to be honest. It's Your crazy. Zoro is no, incredible. No yeah, my Zoro oh, was well, that was Stella Chu. Shouts out to Stella Chu. She went nutty mode with it. Um, like I still have it. I have like the, like I kept the jacket and I kept everything so I could like wear it from time to time. Yeah. Oh, the okay. Robin, Robin wins as she always does. But I feel like they can't have gone Robin wins. Far. This is oh, sick. God. I mean, these will work. And then I'll, I'm sure I'll find the other ones and then you'll be mad at myself. This is all great. This, this, this is all very good. One piece cosplay. They're serving. They're serving. We should have done that cosplay next time I come over. I know. Well, what I wanted to do originally, I gave this as a free one. Do you know who Wisdom is? Yeah. So, um, Wisdom was uh, Dude, in town for the Oscars, okay with everything. but unfortunately, like, because he was just... here for like such a short period of time, we couldn't make it happen. But for those of you who don't know, Wisdom is a TikToker, he's a fashion TikToker, he's awesome. Uh, love him, been a big fan of his for like when he had like 30,000 followers on Instagram. Like, I was when he used to do like Target hauls and stuff, uh, way back in the day, like teaching you how to dress on a budget, uh, before he started getting decked out in all chrome hearts um and uh i was talking to him about this and i actually this is something i still want to do i gave him a freebie basically where i said um you know in honor of toriyama uh you should do a like i wanted to have him on and we would rate all of the toriyama fits like the classic uh dragon ball fits hell yeah and and then have him like recreate them potentially people forget like dragon ball og dragon ball is drippy as hell yeah like yamcha and bulma used to be decked out back in the day and the the covers that toriyama would do for dragon ball were absolutely incredible oh yeah here's my one piece poster so good yeah this was uh i mean i even shave for it i just i don't i wish i looked as good as zoro does i just don't i mean in the live action like uh your zoro casting is perfect he's great Shout out to McKenna. Um, yeah, he's 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 great, you know, obviously, but they're all great. I I love our cast so much. I'm glad that they can finally talk about stuff too now. You know, they can be out there. Like Kiki's been doing uh magazine covers and interviews and stuff all over the place. And I'm just I'm so happy for them because they worked so hard 
and they're so so good they care so much uh and it's great to see them getting you know attention and accolades oh, yeah. that the, they deserve the, does anyone have the the physical uh the physical season two zoro cosplay i gotta show you this this is crazy so do you know what physical is is a korean mm -hmm. uh reality tv show on oh, netflix oh i yeah, just physical saw 100. i just saw this uh earlier today there was a zoro yeah. cosplayer in it right yeah one of the dudes is a cosplayer and he rolled up as zoro <laughs> it's so sick wait Amazing. let me see if i can find the chat can you send me the link to the clip that we were looking at yes uh earlier today People um, keep telling me I need to watch Physical 100. Physical 100 was, like, the first one was pretty fun, but I don't know. I mean, it's just, like, it it kept my attention, but, like, towards the end of it, it, uh, towards the end of it, I got, like, a little bored of it. What is this? Screenwriter <laughs> apologizes for... I saw this. Screenwriter apologizes for Dragon Ball Evolution. Says he dropped the Dragon Ball. I don't know what this is. This never happened. Nope. Just like, just like the other Avatar never happened. Not the Netflix one. The Netflix one is, like, valid enough. But um, the previous Avatar movie, I, I don't even uh, we acknowledge, don't acknowledge its existence. It. And I don't acknowledge the existence of this one either. I'm just glad to not have to be compared to that anymore. Yeah. That was no, the big I think thing. Like, and look, now I can talk. And so I'm going to talk a little bit now. Yeah. Because that everyone before anything came out was just like well it didn't work with dragon ball evolution how the fuck are they going to do it with one piece and it was like man i'm killing myself out here trying to make something really special and yeah. everyone is just comparing it to something from almost two decades ago that has nothing to do with this and i'm just glad that people i'm glad that people gave it a chance yeah i'm glad that people have liked it if you don't that's cool but thank you to everyone who at least gave it a shot no it was great it was really really good like it it was uh wall to wall i i like that there was like reworkings of the original plot as well i assume that was for mass consumption right yeah some of it you know it's it's taking a manga from 1997 and making it for an international live action audience and yeah. so there is some stuff that's got to change but you know we tried to keep the essence as much as possible but what's also cool is because the manga is so much further like when we were making it yeah. there were new reveals new information new relationships and stuff that we became aware of that we could infuse into our telling of the east blue um you know like things like name dropping jimbei and stuff like that that was really fun i think i've, I've told this story before but like um when we were when we started shooting like wano was going on in the manga and there was some new information that's revealed in the who's who and jimbe fight and uh i like ran to our props department and had them redo a prop that was made to fit some new information that had literally just dropped in the manga so that kind of stuff is fun bringing things forward that we know were important or that we learn were a part of something that we didn't get to see before. In that some was respects, you get to pull a Oda a little bit. Cause like a little bit. Cause like his whole uh like one thing that's really awesome about uh the the manga itself is that like there are things, obviously, Easter eggs uh, in the first episode, from the first episode onward that you later find out is like massively important to the plot. So yeah. now you get to you you get to dive into his mind a little bit and like pull from the future and then drop that in as an Easter egg, which is really, really sick. Um, tell Matt not to spoil it for you. Well, I'm on, I am, since the last time we talked, I am now on uh, Wano. I think I'm on like Wano Act 2. I'm on One Pace. So like mm -hmm. One Pace saved my life. I, I, I think without it, without the fandom coming together and like making this thing. Yeah. I probably I shouldn't be even saying this openly, right? Like, because it's technically like pirated, and, and but I do have a Crunchyroll subscription. I have watched all the, uh, I have watched One Piece on Crunchyroll. Please don't get mad at me for those out there. But like the the uh, fan edit itself, like greatly sped up parts of Dress Rosa, and mm -hmm. like uh, genuinely, I think genuinely cut down on like a lot of the filler stuff that you kind of have to add in when you are caught up to the manga yeah. and you're still trying to churn out uh, anime. And um, 
in that in that process, like I I was able to get back into it without uh you know just completely dropping the anime and like reading the manga itself. Right. And now I'm in Wano Act Two, I believe, which is and it's fucking awesome. It's so sick. It's really really cool. Wano's good. Yeah, it's uh it's where I forget where I was. Uh, early on, uh, when you, last time you came in, what is this? Is Matt a Frobin shipper? What does this mean? Uh, Frank, no, I am. I'm not. Frank, oh, Frankie Robin. Oh, I'm a I'm bit not, of a. I'm. Mm -mm. I'm a Robin. I'm a Robin Zoro shipper. No, also incorrect. The only appropriate ship is Robin Law. That's the one. Ooh, that's two of the sick. best, most intelligent characters. And like, look, there's Otis always putting the two of them together. Okay, fair, fair, fair. I think, I think that's a fair assessment. Uh, I, I just, I think like there is like a little bit of tension. I forget which act it was. I forget where, which arc it was in, but there was like, I remember when they were in the jungle, maybe was it Skypea? Maybe mm -hmm. like there's always like a little bit of tension between Robin and Zoro, which is why I was like definitely a little bit like I've shipping him a little bit, which is so lame to even fucking acknowledge this stuff. No, we are, no, no, no. We are full grown adults here. But um no, the, the the I think the Robin Frankie ship is just a meme from when Robin tickles Frankie's balls. They've had a special touch. They've, yeah. they've had a special touch. Yeah. I get I get you on what you're picking up in Skypea though, because it was also nice that like Zora was really the last one to really accept robin and you come to yeah. see it through in skypea and also you know that moment when he catches her uh you know in there that four on one against enel which is one of the best splash pages in the entire series Enuru. of like zoro robin gonfall and wiper standing there like ready to throw down um it's so good yeah um Let's watch this TikTok. Turn this. If you got, yeah, you can send me your you can send me your One Piece TikToks as well if you got some. You can return this. It's what I was gonna wear on our honeymoon night. Nothing in here but lip gloss. <laughs> okay. Suffer. Um. Ask him if he knows about cock piece memes. Okay, no. You guys, please, like, don't be fucking weird. Okay. <laughs> Oh, uh, what do you think about the the new One Piece uh, re-release on Netflix, too? Uh, I'm excited to see what all it's going to be, you know? Um, like, again, similar to some of the remixing, if you want to call it, that, like, we did in the live action, if there are yeah. going to be elements of that in it. I'm also just excited to see that early stuff in new animation, you know, because like, the episode yeah. of East Blue is so beautiful. Like, that's yeah. the best version of the Zoro versus Mihawk fight, and... A bunch of other stuff and so it'll be interesting just to see what changes they might make but i'm always down for like some updated animation for this stuff yeah i think like you know there are obvious limitations from the time <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah, I, I i don't know i i'm very excited about it and i think like anything that makes this more accessible to a broader audience i'm on board with yeah I'm sure that there will be like loyalists who will be like, oh, how dare you, whatever. And then there will be people that will get mad at it. But I think like remasters like this will work very well. I'm excited to hear what the soundscape sounds like when it's not Toei's soundboard. I've, <laughs> dude, okay. I've joked about this. I want to hear your take on this. One Piece is very long. Yes. We all acknowledge that. Yep. We love it. It's, it's so much content and it's great. I am of the belief that there's like, a sum total of like 35 minutes of music in there <laughs> across like across like 2000 episodes like uh, no disrespect to toy studios okay but god damn man what's happening we need like a fifth song <laughs> uh, yeah they have a lot of intro music, but that the they, ones they that change they have, up. they're like everyone loves overtaken yes. and stuff. And the songs go hard as fuck. Yeah, for sure. But it's like, it's like, come on, <laughs> like it's so, it's so long. There should be a little bit more of a variety. Let's switch it up every now and then, like yeah. a, a little bit, especially because like when. When some of the iconic songs that aren't played as much come into play, you're like, oh, thank God. Right. Finally. You're like excited. 
and I think it plays into it a little bit. But it is, it is kind of crazy that it's just like people will cope Always. and say there are different songs in there. Like it's actually different. It's like they're variants. They're variants of the same song. Yeah, <laughs> in many instances. Um, they started switching up an egghead. Yeah, I haven't gotten there yet, so I don't know. But Wano, I was excited. They to have see, eggheads like, very good. It's I, I, I was awesome. excited to see like the, the the um what the fuck is this? Uh, I was excited to see like, you know, the different like Japanese stringed instruments in Wano a little bit. Mm -hmm. So love a good shamisen. Not just the music, is the sound effects too. Yeah, that's that's uh, another part of it. Yeah, they their soundboard needs a little bit of updating, in my opinion. Um. Tell the guy on the right I like his glasses, but if I was in school with him, I would probably bully him and call him four eyes. He's talking about me. He's talking about you? Oh, I was oh wait, say, he that might is, be talking about you, actually. I mean, that sounds a lot like my high school experience. I've dressed pretty much the same, <laughs> uh, but now, you know, I could make a living off of the reasons also, that I was bullied in school. We're both wearing big-ass glasses. I don't know what the fuck this dude's talking about. Just a couple of nerds over here. Sometimes you don't need variety. Okay, dude, you guys are, you guys are crazy. Do not spoil Wano Part 3. I'm watching dub and waiting for the next batch. What do you mean? Oh. Dude, I wonder I, when I think the next batch is. I totally went from uh watching it in dub to having to watch it in sub for right. One Piece, and it's so good. Like, I'll say this much. I think maybe uh Frankie's voice is you know, it, it's all right mm -hmm. in the in the subs, but everybody else is like pretty fire. In the but, subs? Yeah. I don't like Frankie's voice that much in the subs. What? Yeah, I got too used to, like, subs over dubs, especially because, like, a lot of the laughter, in yeah. my opinion, translates really poorly in the dubbed version. Yeah. And I think, like, it basically, it, it sounds way more natural in sub when you have, like, all these, like, weird laughter variants that yeah. all, everyone has, like, a unique laugh. Um. But uh, Frankie's the only voice where I'm like, oh, I love Frankie. Every time Frankie talks, I'm I'm in. Frankie, super. Yeah, I'm on episode seventy. No spoilers. Okay, dude. There's you know you this have gonna a be thousand. a little tough. This is gonna be a little yeah. tough for you. Yeah, you're gonna see some spoilers. Um, can you ask if we're getting a Muppet Chopper? Okay, I can't. He can't leak stuff like that. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. I'm not gonna ask you. You're getting Chopper. I mean, yeah. You're getting Chopper. God, can't I confirm, wish, dude. When I found out that Chopper was supposed to be like a humanoid, like the scary monster version of Chopper, and that like the you know they they basically told him like no, we got to sell plush toys, like fucking dial this back. I was so bummed because I feel like Chopper as like a Chopper as a uh, humanoid like scary demon would be so different and it would be so cool. Chopper now is great. It would He's be. wonderful addition to the cast, like. He, he brings a different dynamic to the story, but I, I always wish to see him like as a monster. I think there's something kind of interesting about cute Chopper still having that idea of feeling that he's a monster because it shows you how internal like that shit that he's dealing with is because yeah. to everyone, like he's adorable. He looks super cute, but he still views himself as a monster. It almost makes it a little bit more sad to me. Yeah. Like he can't even see how adorable he is in the beginning. This is true. Him being a giant humanoid demon who still acts cutesy is really cool, to be honest. Possibly. Chopper got influenced too much by merchandise. Yeah. Um, he's a cute doctor without... Yeah, Chopper is doctors without borders. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Frankie especially is on a pedestal in Japanese because of Oda's special treatment. He literally made Frankie fit the voice actor, not the opposite. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, he loves he loves that voice because he had done stuff before. He's Django... Uh, and he's also Bon Clay, yeah, right? Isn't bon he all Clay. those? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, he loves that guy. Yeah. Um. Well, his devil fruit will awaken. Okay, dude, chill. Uh, what, what will awaken to be a panacea via sakura trees? Haha, just a theory. I don't even know. Hmm. Okay. Um. What was I gonna say? So I want to go through the arcs since the last time we were the last time we were here because yep. like I haven't really uh done recaps in a while okay and i've gone through a lot of arcs uh since the last time you we were here i think i was at like punk hazard or uh, something something like we that here. this chat do, chatters do you remember um what arc i was on uh where is it? okay no 
There we go. Make a new One Piece intro using AI. Yeah, I think I was in Punk Hazard. Yeah, I was like either Fishman Island, like I was mm -hmm. trying to finish Fishman Island or Punk Hazard. And then and then I got on uh, One Piece and I just like ripped through it and it was awesome. Yeah. And um, and I want to go through the, the arcs that have uh, that have happened since then, since the last time you were here. Okay. Um, what is this? Matt, please don't take Robin's melon in a way. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I stand on that. I think pre time skip Robin is the best Robin. The best. Like, Can't literally, be with the bangs. Okay. With the bangs. Yep. And she's like, she's like, kind of, I don't know what, I, like, in my head canon, she's Guyanese. Huh. Like, it, the pre time skip Robin. Yeah. Uh, maybe because, like, uh, I mean, I don't know. It's just like Miss Sunday Robin is peak. Yep. Now maybe not Guyanese, but like something like that. You know what I mean? She I know she's canonically Russian, okay? Technically but, canonically Russian, yeah. Yeah. I always saw her as Latina because she's tanned, because yeah. Spanish is part of what she speaks for her powers. Like that's what I always assumed. I can I can see that. That's why I mean, you know, it's not it's not off base. Like I'm talking like something. Like it could be like a like a Latin American, mm -hmm. South American, something in that variety for sure. And I I wish they had never, I wish they had never done the new Robin. Even though the new Robin's still sick, I had canon her as Romani. That too. When I was a kid, I thought she I was like Egyptian. That. I mean, Egypt, as Joe Biden also famously acknowledged, is a part of the global Latina belt. So. Uh, you know, when he said Mexican president of Mexico, CC Robin with the cowgirl hot. Exactly. Yep. Um, peak Robin. Robin was only tan in the anime post time skip. Robin is only lighter because she's more similar to the manga now where she was always pale. Yeah, I know. Yes. But, but sometimes, still, sometimes we were happy gifted accidents. something that got yes. taken away from us. Yes. Sometimes happy accidents do make, uh, for, for, uh, you know, possibly better versions, you know? All um, Robins are good Robins. This is still yes. that's ultimately yes, that Robin is, true. is still goaded. I'm just saying that like I, I will never give up the pre uh, my my take that uh, pre time skip Robin is is the best version of Robin. Miss mm -hmm. All Sunday Robin is the peak uh, version of Robin, in my opinion. Um, anyway. take away the cowboy hat. How dare you? I would never. Yeah, that's crazy. I would never. You're talking to someone who's loyal to the to the fandom and also to the. To the work the original work um you didn't talk about the whole cake island i remember you talking about the kotakuri fight yeah well what is this here's the timestamp time? where you left okay. off we'll, we'll save it up we'll save it for an, uh next time we can do that yeah oh yeah we'll we'll do the um we'll, we'll go through it now perfect uh we'll we'll start off where we left off on on uh the arcs since uh the last time when we were uh, since the last time we were talking, what what kind of animes have you watched since then? Since the last time you since were here, since I was last here, yeah. Uh, what are you what are you what are you working with right now? What's the big stuff that we've been doing? I mean, Freerin is incredible. Um, you want something to drink, by the way? Sure. I am also. Can you give me that? Mm -mm. Good. Or I'm no, gonna, I had I had I, mean, I had breakfast while. All right, ago, I'm but. gonna get you. I'm gonna get you some super dank uh, Mediterranean food. You don't yeah. have any. You don't have any food. Uh, like allergies or any nope. restrictions, right? Nope. Okay, good. Uh, yes, Chad. Freerin is goaded. Uh, I've been doing Freerin. Uh, I've been rewatching Bleach because Thousand Year Blood War is so good, and it really made me miss OG. So I've been doing a bit of a Bleach rewatch. Um, what else? Continuing, you know, Spy Fre Family. Freerin is a must watch, huh? I have it not. Is. It's it's great. Okay, I have not watched it. Is it on Hulu, chat? I mean, because I'm I'm gonna dive in. I I after this, I have a 15 hour flight coming up to Australia. You got some time, so I got a lot of time. Um, oh, it's on Crunchyroll. Oh no, I don't I don't know if I have it on my phone. I don't know how to do Crunchyroll on my phone. Crunchyroll's really difficult user interface. Mm -hmm. Like probably one of the worst ones is shocking. Dungeon Meshi is good. I have been watching Dungeon Meshi. Another shout out to Emily Rudd, uh, who's on the English voice cast. Hell yeah. Link Clink is Chinese animation and everyone should see it. I'm a, speaking of uh, Chinese works, I will be watching 
three body problem. Have you seen Dune two? Yeah. Oh, masterpiece. How, how yeah. masterpiece? So fucking good. Holy shit, dude. Uh, I have to check out three body problem too. It's good. It's on my list for the weekend. Gotta Hell check yeah. it out. Yeah, that's what that's what I that's what I have on my um on my list. Um, okay, so for you from this place, I kind of there's so many good things to eat here, and I don't know, like I don't know how, I don't know what to show you first. I trust you as far as Turkish food goes. This is my favorite restaurant that I eat from pretty much every single day. Oh yeah, and I I want to uh, share the the Turkish delicacies with you. But I don't know what I should. Lahmacun is a must. That's an easy one. And then maybe like beyti. That's like usually something that people like for American sensibilities. I mean, you know, I go to you for my Turkish stuff. I chat, you did all of this. Over Christmas, I was flying to the UK to visit my brother and his family because that's where they live. And I had like some massive delays and had to spend the night in Istanbul to catch a new flight and had absolutely no idea what to do. And I remember texting Hassan when I landed. So I was like, I got 12 hours in Turkey. Like what, what should I do? So you're my, you're my go-to. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, this is, I'm going to show you some stuff right now. Don't worry. Um, hold on. Let's see. I think I'm going to get, uh, I think I'm going to get Matt, uh, Beiti Kebab. And I think I'm going to get you lahmacun as well to taste, to try it out. And that'll be enough, I think, for your first experience, first foray into this space. Okay. I see people this? asking about the TCG game. Uh, I do play. I run a red-green law deck is the one that I'm using right now. I have some new, some new red cards that I need. I need to go find some more... Uh, some more paramount war sets uh because there were a couple of cards that i'm missing instead of Adana, i'm gonna give him beti i think beti is pretty good it, 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 it's like the best of all worlds what is it have you played with have you played with oda okay dude no i haven't played with oda i have though uh i've done some deck building and some card trading and stuff with naito one of his uh one of his editors that's sick yeah, because he plays. He's he's big into it. Look at the hamster. Here, they're... they're... I, I did hold her a lot when I first got her. Yeah, that's that's really important is the, the beginning. This is really good. She did a phenomenal job. Emeru yeah. is incredible at cosplay. She made me into... Um, she turned me into the Witcher uh, when I was out in Austin, and it was insane. I looked so... She made uh, my buddy Will into a uh a, a pretty anime girl and me into the witcher mm -hmm. and i felt i've never felt felt so pretty in my life oh yeah there's like th do we have a clip of this i want to show it oh, did you do your zora costume no um Emirus can't believe what she have done wow. it's sick armor yeah and she whipped this together in like no time she did it in like such a short period of time my hair. It looks so cool. <laughs> All right, you're gonna have to ask her to help me with something then. Yeah. I want to do. I've never, you know, I've never cosplayed. I'm not brave enough. But now I think I don't care that I'm not brave enough, and I just kind of want to try it. Wow. You. W w what would you do as a cosplay? I mean, Law's my guy. I kind of feel like I'd want to do pre time skip oh, no. Law. You know, like the yellow hoodie and the hat. Oh, okay, okay. We'll oh, ask her. We'll ask her. I'm gonna. I'm gonna write in their chat. All right, chat says do it. I'll do it. If Emery will help me, I'll do it. I'm at the One Piece live action showrunner, and he's asking if you can cosplay him as Trafalgar Law. You have to go to Austin. I mean, she does come to L.A. Let's see. Let's see if they see it. Whoa, photography. Hasanabi, a reminder. You would have received, you just received violates the channel's moderation piece. settings. Check your whispers. What? Wait, what? What'd you do? I'm I don't know. One Piece live action showrunner is asking if we can cosplay him as Terra. Ooh, Law. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm down. Okay. 
Yes, I can. Done. What? Done. What the heck? Thanks, that's Andrew. Hassan cool. with the connections. Wait, that's crazy. He's just hanging out with him today? What? Oh, that's crazy. Wait, is Hassan still here? Or did he peace out? Oh my gosh. Oh, I almost got automotive Lamal. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? Sorry, I have very harsh auto mod here. Jesus. It's very bad. And Hassan, I'll be fuck off. Say? Yo, mama. God. All caps, Andy. Are, are, are they looking for um, a bathroom cleaner? I, I just want to be on set. <laughs> are they looking for someone to awkwardly stand there? I can do that. I can be a Standing water Standing there boy. awkwardly is my job on sure set. I do that. Uh, can you unban yes. me? It's, people are so stupid. <laughs> Now, is it weird that I like we're being bald? Waiting. Like, I just like wearing the bald cap. <laughs> for the finished I, I, cosplays. Okay, I'm trying to not get auto modded. That's why I'm using. <laughs> that's why I'm using no caps. No more caps. Believe, oh, Jesus. We're waiting these for are the all... finished cosplays. Oh God, I mean, I mean, these are really all my today. fans Most in here. These are all they're my fans so in here except for this guy. I probably did ban just, this guy. They're just so chill. Venom rat. Oh you banned me for making no, a comment about forehead. when you when he said how streaming is a harder than a regular job. Nice. Well, it's well, if very I pull, cute. If I pull the weave down, they don't know. Oh god. Where, did I lose the baby finger shit? Oh no, I have him. <laughs> he called me a nons, bro. That's why we banned you, dog. <laughs> What do you things? mean? Oh. Yeah, Lake McGrew, yeah, honestly, the sniper. Really cool. I get it. I hate not having a very nice forehead. I feel naked. Dude, you, you guys, I you love people I taking advantage like, of the fact that you're in her really chat trying to talk to you to get unbanned back yeah. in yeah. yours. Because <laughs> the editor of our. Uh, I'm on this podcast with Asmin and Tectone. Yeah. And the editor, he made this edit where it looks like my forehead goes all the way up to here. <laughs> And a bunch of people thought it was real. Wait, let me show <gasps> you. I don't understand oh. why she's Dude, putting on have, a wig. A Her hair already looks where, like, like Nico Robin's just, hair. They just like Photoshop. But my I, you know, she's out. the pro here. But so. I start my bangs pretty far back, so they think I have like a ten head. Oh my god. Unban me, bro. Unban me, bro. Uh, <laughs> nope. <laughs> I see the thumbnail. Wait, what? Easier to style. You gonna cosplay Frankie? Oh yeah, that's the thing. Well, obviously, <laughs> like, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> For me, um, uh, I if I were given the opportunity, I would uh, I would probably cosplay Doflamingo. Or oh, yes. if I were to choose one, I, it's got to be Dofi. He is the best villain in the entire is, series. Yes. Oh my God. Which Easily. we'll talk about in a second. Everyone's saying Kuma, but like I think Dofi is the best. Yeah. He is the best villain. Still the best I villain. I also in the do really like uh what's the beast uh that uh they're facing on one of the warlords uh uh his name? Damn it, I'm forgetting. The the, the giant. One of the one of the four uh, pirate emperors. Kaido. Oh. I I think yes. like emperor not warlord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not warlord, sorry. Kaido. Emperor. Um I I Who's think Kaido is pretty sick too. I think Kaido is also pretty sick. I would do Kaido. You do a sick Kaido. Yeah, I think I I could pull Kaido is at least like a better fit than Dofi. You could do that. Yeah, you'd yeah, have to I mean, do the full get the full sleeve done, dude. Oh my god, this is he's like, just the he's the best wisdom. Yeah, like, wisdom is y'all. So if you don't good. know him, go check him out. Go follow him. He's so good, incredible. Who's your dream Dofi cast, Matt? I don't know if you're, oh, can you say man, I even, I mean, I feel like I can say, but that's all, that's one that I haven't thought of a whole lot just because we're not, we're not there just yet, obviously, but who would be an ideal Dofi? I don't know. Throw some names out. Ryan Gosling, I actually think would be fun. I mean, yeah, but that's just, it, I feel like that's just Ryan Gosling. Because he's Ryan Gosling. And he could do anything. Yeah. Um, I'm a big Lee Pace fan. Maybe not Dofi, but I'd love for him, obviously. I'd love for anybody to be <laughs> to be in the show. What is this? Usopp during Ramadan? World Water Day. 
<laughs> During Ramadan. Go drink water. Drink water. Salt thirst. Salt thirst. Drink water. <laughs> During Ramadan. Oh, I'm drinking sip, sip. This jacket he's wearing is so sick. You sip. Killian Murphy as Ace. That's he's a little, he's bit, a little, little he's a little older. older. Yeah, he's a little old. Oh my God, Ace. God, I Ace is another one of my Ace used to be one of my favorite characters. I still love him. I still think he's one of the best. Yeah, it's just like makes me so sad. Um, what have you should Matt your blast off tweet? Wait, what? No, why would I do that? <laughs> is is Timothy Chalamet? Come on, man. Timothy. I love I love I love Timmy, but not I don't he's he's not Ace for me. Yeah, he's Ace is not like a like a wayfish twink. What the fuck? Like he's he's kind of yacked. He's not like out of control, Jack, but he's like very different vibes, I think, than than uh Timothy Charlemagne. Robert De Niro for Ace. <laughs> Does the showrunner have final say in casting? Uh, great question. So what we do is we do the casting process. We sit with people. We look at tapes. We do callbacks, all of that kind of stuff. And we have conversations, of course, with Oda for the important characters, like what he really wants to make sure is uh, is represented in a particular character. And we, as the production, will go through the casting process, come up with a choice or a couple of choices and then we will present them to Oda and say here's what we like about this person what do you think and it becomes a conversation um so we do a lot that's how a lot of the stuff on the show really goes is we'll kind of do we'll have early conversations with Oda and then we'll do kind of the majority of I guess the legwork of it you could say and then present some stuff to Oda, have further conversation with him. So that's casting, that's like set designs, that's scripts, obviously. Um, we kind of bring him in in the beginning and in the end. And when he's like, yep, okay, cool, let's move forward with this, then that's how it that's how it goes. Someone asked, is Matt allowed to talk about if we still Afro Luffy in live action? Bro, I have gone on record as a Davy Back fight lover. Uh, because, you did, you said it here. Yeah, I and I do not take it back. I, because I am a gentleman, I am a cultured gentleman. I love that arc. So if we get there, yeah, I want to, I want to okay. see, I want to see Afro Luffy. Okay. Uh, unironically, I think Kaya would be great cast as a Sunny. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said Danny DeVito is Chopper. An interesting choice. Yeah, the same vibes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, what does a showrunner do for the show? Oh, yeah, I forget that there's like a lot of people who are uh, oblivious to this sort of thing. Sure. How would you describe it? I mean, he runs the show. Yeah, it like the showrunner is is kind of the ultimate decision maker. So in the stages of like making a show, um, you know, a showrunner is the one who's dictating, okay, this is the story that we're going to tell for the season. These are the things that I want to see. This is the stuff that I kind of want to do. You lead the writer's room in how you're going to come up with the scripts. Um, showrunners also, they'll typically like do a, a pass on scripts before they go in, or if there are a lot of changes that have to be made, those kind of revisions, that falls to the showrunner. But then I'm also involved in all of the prep and production stuff. So like when we're getting concept art for things, when we're starting construction, I'm signing off on all of that kind of stuff. Um, casting as well. Like you, you have a hand and kind of a lead in every aspect of the show. Why not just call that position director? Um, because a director, for the most part, especially in television, is more there to see the script through they work with the actors they um you know they do early assemblies of the episodes themselves um a showrunner kind of goes beyond that because you're not just directing the cast or directing a particular episode um we're in it from beginning to end like you know i 
was sitting in editing when the when the strikes happened uh and i just had i had to stop one day you know of course because we have to stop all all work because any any work especially from a showrunner perspective any work is writing when you're editing and changing stuff in post that's rewriting that's rewriting how an episode is structured you're just doing it with footage instead of doing it with words um and that was actually that was a that was tough like having to put the sh- i didn't get to finish the show yeah because we we were on strike and so i know there's one uh one thing that people have talked about like really missing from season one which is feeling that we didn't do enough with usop and you know that's something that i i take on um you know i i listen we we're proud of what we did but we can always do things better and we're taking a lot of that into our second season but one of the things that was kind of weird for me also is watching the show without having to finish the edit because we shot much more Usopp content, especially in episodes seven and eight that actually made it into the show. There's a whole thing about Usopp in episode seven, like really starting to craft some of his specialty rounds. And there were a lot more aspects to the Chu fight, you know, that moment of him hiding and like psyching himself out and being like, everyone else is counting on me. Everyone else is standing up. Like I've got to stand up. We shot all of that stuff. So I don't know why it didn't make it into the show. I miss it also, but I wasn't, I wasn't there um, to finish editing, but trust me, we know people want more Usopp and we're going to give it to you. If you know some of the stuff that's coming in the manga and the anime, you know, there's some great moments, some really great things coming up for Usopp. And we're going to make sure that we do, we do right by him. Hell yeah. Um, have you seen this guy? Who's this? This is a boxer. Uh, I think Prince Nas, uh, or no, Ben Whitaker is the guy, right? <laughs> white beard tattoo on his back. He does. He has a white is that beard. real? Yes, bro. He has a white beard tattoo That's and he hard fights. As fuck. The guy, I think he's fighting. Uh, Prince Nasim is also like a very interesting fighter as well. From what I understand, they're both like, they both are very like, uh, they love styling on their, uh, they love styling on their on their. Good if you're part of the white beard crew. So obviously he's the best of the best. You know, higher quality of the tattoo. Oh come on, <laughs> son of a bitch, dude. Okay, Got yeah. Him. Fucking got my ass. All right, <laughs> dude, in front of a guest, in front of an esteemed guest, nonetheless, that is messed up, I know bro. how it goes. You know, you know, I, you know, I watch you. I know how this goes. Oh my Lord, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's just fucked up actually. Okay. Well, here's the top of the hour ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. Oh my God. I have another banger for you to show you actually. Um, Here. Don't look, don't look yet. I already know what this is. She is the greatest her i know her love of anime like i love the todoroki cosplay that she did a couple years ago but yeah this jojo one is absolute fire amazing ah she's so she's so sick yeah she's so fucking cool amazing i'm a hot girl 100 percent 100 p i'm a hot girl um I was uh I was very I was very upset that Crunchyroll did not invite me to the anime awards. Uh I've been I've been trying to work with them uh for a minute now and I would have loved to be at the anime awards uh, but also obviously they invited Megan Thee Stallion instead. So much better much better choice. Let's campaign though cuz I was a little bit mad too. I was actually at their offices like 2 weeks before. Wait, they didn't invite you to the Crunchyroll anime awards? No, to be fair though, uh they the did invite fuck? me. They had a really great, they were doing a lot of really cool stuff for uh, for Black History Month. And they invited me to come and speak at their offices just about like my experiences, my love of anime and all of that stuff. So I'm trying to get in bed. Oh, also, I'll have to send you a photo. They gave me a really nice gift for speaking to. They gave me a sick Doflamingo figure that's like too big to fit on like the bookshelves where I put most of my other figures. I'll have to show you. It's amazing. Oh, that's then if you guys are figure collectors and you know, the portrait of pirates, dude, I have so many, I have so many figures. They're all same. Look down there. You can see some of them. Um, I I've never like unboxed them. 
I guess we could unbox some of them and take them out of the box. Oh, there's unboxings? Like, there's so many. Dude, I have so many fucking figures. It's crazy. Everybody always makes fun of me and says, like, I'm a, I'm like a meme. Because, like, to normies, when they see my wall back here, they're like, oh, this guy's got a bunch of fucking Funko Pops. I'm like, they're not Funko Pops. Funko Pops suck. It's different. I, yeah, I'm not a Funko fan either. I don't like Funko Pops. I'm these not are, a Funko fan either. These are figurines. They're very different. Right. They're not toys. Damn, this is crazy. Look at this. Kirby. Let me fold this. They're artistic figurines. Is this just a day? Wait, what day are you on now? Uh, I've oh, is this the one? Like Hold on. Let's pull it up or something, here. Because I've been skipping so many That's days. the one. Oh. Well done, chat. Well done. Oh. Yeah, that's the one. Fucking sick. Oh my. I'm buying it. Love I'm it. I'm fucking Love buying this, dude. Love are you it. joking? Oh my right. god! Oh, fuck! I'm yep. buying it right now. Are fuck this! I'm this? so right. good. Uh, he's a Mario speedrunner. Oh, oh yes, I saw. Yes, yes. No, 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 yeah, no, 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 no. This is the thing. It's okay. a, it is. A, it is dangerous. It is a slippery slope. I, dude, I'm, I'm. This is what I spend my disposable income on. Dude, I mean, it's the best thing to spend your disposable income on. I'm literally buying it right now. <laughs> we gotta go to Little Tokyo together sometime. We gotta go hit up Jungle and stuff. Oh, go do a yes. little figure shopping. Oh, I. D oh, dude, I would love to do that. Absolutely. Wait here, maybe I can do a PayPal checkout real quick. Um, thoughts on DC's expansion into anime? Wait, what? Oh yeah, with the the Suicide Squad Isekai. They're doing a Suicide Squad Isekai. That's crazy. Yeah. Wait, let's take a look at this, dude. Anime is so dominant. Uh, it, it's pretty wild. It's pretty wild how much it's like. I mean, it's always been like very popular, obviously, but I I do feel like, um, especially recently, it is like. It, it it has become more of a in our lifetime. Like we're around, we're the same age. Mm -hmm. In our lifetime, I feel like anime went from anime went from being something that was like kind of even weird by nerd culture standards. Yep. To like straight up every fucking normie watches at least like one kind of consumes like some kind of anime or manga, which is very cool. Uh, it, yeah. During COVID, I feel like it really blew up. Yeah. And I'm here for it. You know, some people like to take a gatekeeping approach with that kind of stuff, but I'm like, great. I love the fact that there are kids in middle school and high school and stuff that aren't getting bullied for liking anime yes. like, like we did when we were younger. Yeah. Like, I, I love that. I love that more people get to see the great kind of storytelling and artistry that exists in anime and manga. Yeah. And also, like, I think um, I will say, like, the mo here, we can talk about, like, the most... I, there's a couple things I want to show you. Hold on, my head is like I'm all over the I'm all over the place. I want you to tell me first of all. Are you familiar with CJ the Champ? Mm -mm. Ooh, you're really gonna like his shit. Then he is a a massive fucking weeb. He has a series called like Black Air Force uh, Energy. Yeah, where he'll like talk about which character has like the most uh, you know Black Air Force One energy. Love it. But uh, there's a couple things I want to do. One, I'll show you some of his uh, stuff, and I think you'll like it. Beyond Scared Straight, JoJo Edition. Uh, yeah, Majin Buu, The Ultimate Menace. Um, he has a lot of really, really cool stuff. But I want you... I want you to rank, like, which anime characters are the blackest. Like, as far as... As far as, like, which anime characters are canonically black, even though they're not actually... Like, Piccolo being, you know... I mean, he's one of the a tops. Great, a great example of this. He's one of I the tops. I want you to... If, you, if you're comfortable doing that. Yeah. We'll, we can do that. Um, also, let me... I'm also, like, trying to fucking log into my PayPal so I can so buy this can fucking... This figure. Buy this fucking figure. I'm going to see one of these Zero Sugar Mountain Dews and see what this is about. Oh, uh, do you want... I have uh, Zero Sugar Major Melon and I have regular Mountain Dew. Or like regular diet Mountain Dew. I've never, I'll, I'll grab one of those. I've never tried the Major Melon. If you like melon flavor shit, the yep. Major Melon one is incredible. Hold on, I'm gonna grab it for you. CJ the Champ is really down for them all. I'm all like, dude, I'm having a hard time putting this fucking <laughs> PayPal code in. It's crazy. <laughs> Let me do this. this. I think there will be good anime adaptations to follow. Yeah, I, I do. Um, it's always been a matter of the right people uh not only seeing value in the space but the right people spearheading this stuff and you're getting things you know you're getting 
people who grew up with this stuff, people who love this stuff that are in positions to be able to make these adaptations. I think that makes all the difference. You know, it's the same kind of thing. You can look at the difference between certain Marvel movies that we had pre MCU, like Kevin Feige is a massive fan. He loves this stuff. He knows this stuff and him being behind it is the reason that we have things like the MCU now. And so I think and hope that there will be others. Um, and also, I don't think we're the first. I think I've said this before. If you have not seen the Wachowskis Speed Racer, go watch that movie. It is anime as hell. It is so much fun. Uh, that is a real true, thank you, sir, uh, like early first really good anime live action. That movie rules. Um, but I do. I do think there will be, I do think there will be others. Uh, and I'm excited to see them, you know. Um, I know they're, they're working on a Naruto movie right now. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm sure we're going to start getting, uh, getting news about a lot of other adaptations being made. Yeah, definitely. I, I think there is, you know what I think is, like, one of the greatest non-anime but anime-style movies I've watched in recent years? RRR. Oh, yeah. It is, by the way, which apparently is so popular in Japan for understandable reasons, for what I just basically mentioned, that it is still playing in Japanese movie theaters right now. Really? Yes. Like, they still play RRR in Japanese movie theaters to this fucking day, which is sick. And I totally understand why. Yep. Like, it, it, it permanently exists in my mind where the fucking, he, like, rips out the animals and in one of the final battle sequences and they're like fighting with animals like throwing animals at the at the fucking uh at the at the british soldiers it's like it's ridiculous i think it's on netflix if you haven't seen it mm -hmm. um i'm pretty sure it's on netflix so that's another one speed racer and rrr put those on your list for this weekend yeah definitely um the most disrespectful moments in anime history is another, like, uh, thing that he does. I mean, look, there's one. Killer B is black as hell. Love him. So the reason, so part of the reason why I wanted to do this with you is because as a black anime head, mm -hmm. um, like, your your experience with this is, is uh, obviously unique, especially because you're currently wearing a Dragon Ball shirt. Damn. And I feel like Dragon Ball, especially for Latin America is so important like akira toriyama is such an important figure and um That's and good. there are like there are like certain animes that uh really exploded in popularity uh among um among like black and brown communities mm -hmm. in america I, I obviously like dragon ball z being one and then i would say um i guess like what's another one what's a what's another big one i feel like I mean, Naruto was Naruto very, was another yeah. one. Yeah, Naruto was definitely another one as well. I think a lot of shonen specifically really resonate with, uh, with people of color because if you look at a lot of shonen protagonists, they're they're underdogs and outcasts. Yeah, and you know, a lot of people of color can be made to feel that way, um, you know, in their own lives, and so seeing someone that is able to rise against that, that's able to prove themselves, that's able to turn people to their side and find friends uh, is really inspiring and something, you know, that was great to see that it's like, oh, well, if they can do it, we can do it. Yeah. And I, I think that's one of the things that makes it really impactful for, you know, for, uh, for people of color, especially. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and there's like, I mean, One Piece especially is like, and Bleach too, to a certain degree, is like very diverse in its casting. Yeah, like it's it's very cool in that in that regard as well. Um, wait, let's see what people are saying. We claim Marum in the Chimera, the Chimera Ant King, Mugen in Samurai Champloo, oh, and Mugen Yoruichi. and Yoruichi, a hundred percent. Yes, a hundred percent for sure. We should uh, hold on. I'm gonna take notes on this, and then we'll, I'll like pull them up, and then we can talk about it. Uh, hold on. Where are my Australia notes? Okay. Black anime. Canonically. Black anime characters. 
and then we can rank them. Well, you can rank them. I, I, Jet, yep, we claim Jet from Cowboy Bebop 100%. Yeah. 100%. All, all of the Alkiji. Yep, yes. Alkiji, definitely. Dude, I still, like, definitely. I was shocked when I found out that, like, the, the three uh, admirals, like, I guess, like, I guess the, 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 uh, what was the other one? Uh, um, what are the three admirals? Like, what are their names? Um, Alkiji. It's Alkiji. Kuzan and Akainu. Yeah. So I thought all three were, were like, all three were black. Maybe not Akainu. Mm -hmm. Like, he, he, I thought he was like more like Hawaiian or, or, you know, Samoan. But like, Alkiji and, Wait, hold on. I'm going to pull him up real quick. Um, I can see Alkiji is 100%. There's something about Kuzan. He's got like big, like black uncle energy. Dude, you cannot convince me that like it, it is it's shocking. When I found out that these are like real life Japanese characters, mm -hmm. it blew my fucking <laughs> mind. I was like, what? They're not black? Like it, I felt betrayed. Yeah. Because like. Kizaru, not Kuzan. Yeah, sorry. Kuzan and Aokiji are the same person. Wrong yeah. K. It, it, it's just like, like it blow, especially these two. Like, I, I thought that they were, they were black. Like, I, I definitely, I was like, he's Samoan and these two are black. It turns out he's like, he is, I like, think, after like a Hawaiian dude, maybe. Like, he was like, uh, uh, styled after a, a Hawaiian dude, but like, it blew my mind that they're not, they're Okinawan. Yeah. Okay. Well, like, yes, Kizaru is Italian. He definitely does read that. But there's also like, if you've got a black uncle, you've got one that is a lot like Kizaru. Like he is Italian and black at the same time. Yeah, Italians are POC anyway. So, <laughs> dude, it, come on. Like, I know. I know. It doesn't like the vibes too. Like it doesn't make sense. Like he, they're first of all, they're way too swagged out. Like they, it's just I don't know. This this part I I just don't understand that how they were actually Japanese. He's got waves. I mean, yeah. yes, look at him. Yeah, I just don't understand how they are like real life Japanese people <laughs> that were also like directly crafted off of real life Japanese people too. Like oh, yeah. it, it's not even like it's basically like uh, a a very uh, faithful adaptation. Okay, I'll put these guys in as well. Uh, Zaru. Uh, and Alkiji. Kazara reminds me of the older Yakuza from Yakuza Zero. Yeah, he does mm -hmm. look like that. Um, a little bit. He does also have Adam Sandler vibes. Well. He does. He does kind of look like Adam Sandler a little bit too. I don't know how. I have seen some people claim Vegeta as well. You think uh, really? I I I kind of see it. I kind of see it. He's okay. that like. You know, he's that real angry dad that you just wanted. You just want him to tell you that he's proud of you. I get that. <laughs> their actors starred in the Yakuza films. Oh, they did. Yeah, they're actors. They're like three actors that he based the vice admirals on. Oh, Skeeter Valentine. A hundred. Everybody knows this. Skeeter okay. Valentine. Everybody knows this. Again, really angry dad. Uh, drippy as fuck. Uh, weird slang. Like, come on. For the 90s, the Valentines are 100% black. Here's what they were designed after. Are the One Piece Navy Admirals designed after real life people? Yeah. Yusaku Matsuda. But like, come on, dude. I mean, he, he, I, no, I, I will, I refuse. In my head, Canon Alki G is black 100%. I'm with you. Yeah. And, and Borsalino Kazaro, uh, detailed after Kuni Tanaka. Um, and then Suzuki Akainu after Bunta Sugawara. Oh shit! He shows after a real. Mm -hmm. Whoa! I did not know that. He's so sick. He's so fucking sick. Yeah, Fujitora is great. <clears throat> Ooh, Jimbei. Black or. Hawaiian. Hawaiian. Samoan. He's Samoan. Yeah, I think, yes. Yeah. He, I know in the think, SBS, like his thing, I think he's Indian, I think is what Oda said in the SBS of like where oh, really the, you know, just the answering the question of like where these people would be from, you uh -huh. know, in the real world. Um, but yeah, Jimbe, I 
always read Samoan. Yeah, that's why. That's why I think so too. Yeah. Um, completely off topic, but I never understood why Norman Osborn in Spider Man has waves because he's, <laughs> he's that guy. Yeah, that, that is a he's funny one of the greatest Marvel thing. villains ever. Get, yeah, one hundred percent. If we are talking about a character who's black, or Schnitzel from Chowder is one hundred percent a black man. Whoa, Chowder is a show I've not thought about in a long time, and yes. Chowder Schnitzel is definitely black. I have no idea what this is. Chowder was a great cartoon Real life counterpart. Ser- <laughs> Schnitzel. <laughs> great old school Cartoon Network series. Okay. Bakugo is black. I stand on this. I don't know what hmm. Bak- I don't know who Bakugo is. My hero. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> said, Oscorp has always been in possession of incredibly advanced wave technology. <laughs> yeah. Okay, they had this whole combo at DreamCon. Wait, oh, really? Yeah. Then be black. Wait, 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 hold on. Fifty percent, seventy percent. See, I've got to go no to Jim. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Jim Bay's black. I think Jim Bay's some more. They finna discuss AP. They finna say AP. That's awesome. <laughs> They're having arguments on the mic. That's amazing. <laughs> All I want y'all to do is understand this. You, you're talking about Jimbe, the individual character, but I'm here to tell you all the fish people who are oppressed, African Americans. Okay, okay. Yes, if Fair. we're yes, if we're going with fishmen on the whole, they're all black. Yes, uh, it, of course. I mean, that one is like a 100. percent Like that is yeah, that is directly what he he wrote it off of. Yeah. And we leaned into it. And I know some people were a little upset that we leaned into it. And I know some people were upset that Arlong was a little bit black. But also, I don't care. Wait, why, why are they mad about that? That's, like, that makes sense. Some people just thought that we leaned into it too much. And that, like I love... Uh, McKinley did such a great job uh, portraying Arlong. And I love how black he is. Because also, at the end of the day, it's like... I saw something in that. Oda confirmed it. And I was like, cool. I'm a black short of this show. I'm going to make it a little bit black. Yeah, also, like, this is what I don't understand about the fandom sometimes, like, where people are like, oh, like, the One Piece is not woke. It's like, dude, it is literally the wokest fucking anime, like, across the board. What we are talked you talk- about that last time, too. It's like, yeah. One Piece is very political, how whether the, yeah, you how like you it or it? not. It, it is. I'm sorry. Like, there are entire, every single arc is designed after, like, one political concept almost. Like, you can point to, you can point to a, a, a political concept, like, but especially as far as, like, Fishman goes, like, that's crazy. It's directly about slavery and emancipation. What the fuck? Um, Yo, you guys like Ava? Yeah, absolutely. Evangelion is one of the, like, earliest formative anime for me. Ava, um, Akira, obviously, and you know, starting with the a lot of the Toonami classics, Cowboy Bebop, Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball Z, uh, yeah. Outlaw Star, the underrated GOAT, that series. Hazan, if you've never seen Outlaw Star, easy, quick, 20... Is it, isn't Outlaw Star, it's an OG one, right? Yeah. It's the OG anime, I think, right? Yep. Outlaw Star is so... I've never seen it. ...fucking good. I'll, 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 I'll I've got it. I'll lend you. It. I've got the collector's box set. I'll lend it to you. It's so good. Um, catch up to Wano, damn you! I know, I know, I know. Okay, uh, we'll rate my arcs in a second. Let's let's keep going off this uh, off this tip. Had a Malcolm X. Jimmy was supposed to be the patient, the patient Martin Luther King. That's why he got to live on. The other guy died just like Malcolm X did. You already know the vibe. All the fish people was black people. They couldn't go to the island. They sent them underwater. We, they were literal slaves. They were slaves. They were slaves. <laughs> they, were slaves. <laughs> they had bread. They had. Yeah. I mean, Fisher Tiger, obviously. Like, that bread. That one is a given, That's I think. It. Yep. Come on. All right. I guess it is. It would be, ra- it would be racist. Know, it would be racist not to acknowledge that, okay? That would be racist. Yep. Um, wait, hold on. Is there a part two to this? Because I want to see, like, all the other ones yeah, that they what, talk Yeah, I just want to see, like, a, a run-through yeah, yeah, yeah. of some of the characters that and they were we debating. Can, and then and then we can give our takes. Me as the, the white guy, I got to have a take, obviously, of course. <laughs> is how it works. Um, where does anyone have the second one? Or how did I even how yeah, do I even that go one come back from? on fucking... 
It's TikTok. What the fuck? Where is it? Oh, here it is. It's part one. Where's part two? Aaron Yeager is black. Aaron get, get the fuck out of here. Oh, God. Oda said in an SBS that if Jim Bay were in the real world, he'd be from India, but I can definitely see him as black too. I don't, I don't, no, I, I, I'm convinced on, on, uh, Jim Bay being, uh, Pacific Islander. Yep. For sure. Okay. Let's talk about the most Turkish anime characters. There's nothing like you can point to. Here's a link. Non-human characters that we all know are black from Down Magazine. I mean, that one is like not, that's a given. That's, Garnett is, yes. yeah. Um, Will from five. I mean, he's Wilt is based off of Wilt Chamberlain. Like, yes. Yeah. These are Killer B. We all know it. Piccolo, blackest one out there. From what I heard from my brother, Piccolo is black because of his mannerisms. He's aloof and has a tough demeanor. Guy got a clean, bald, round head. And even though his skin color is green, black people relate to him because he's a different color than all of his peers in Dragon Ball Z series. Um, that last point, though, that's so real. People even joke that he's black yeah. because he's willing to take care of someone else's, else's kid. kid. Piccolo is Gohan's true father. Yeah. Um, Cake from Adventure Time. Grim. I haven't heard that one before. Grim oh, but he's Jamaican. Oh, no, that makes sense. Right. He's yeah. Jamaican. Uh, I don't know who made the decision to make the Grim Reaper Jamaican. Uh, <laughs> Brad Pitt. Have, hello. Have you seen um, Brad Pitt uh, speaking, uh, doing Patois? No, have you we, never seen that? No. Oh, my God. What was the fucking movie? This is one of my favorite cringe uh Meet Joe Black. Oh, dude. Oh, it's I do not even remember this. Up. I can't think of the last time I saw that movie. You see, immediately it comes <laughs> a Jamaican. Here it is. Doctor. Oh, um, just one second. I'll be right there. Please, my mama is sicker than him. This is going to give you whiplash. I'm just letting you know <sighs> if you don't right. remember this No, moment. I completely blocked this out. Obia. No, Mama. Obia, man. I'm going to die. Mama, stop it. It's just a man. What's Obia? Bad spirit. She just thought people. She don't mean nothing. Please help us. Of course. Bad spirit. No, Obia, sister. No devil, no dopey. Everything going to be iry. Oh. <laughs> that that That's reaction. Like that reaction is like, what did you just do? Why would you do that? <laughs> Why would you do that, Brad Have Pitt? You no. Okay. I'd be looking at him too. <sighs> you going to be all right, Mama? Go over to Doctor Lady. Mom going to be fine now. Don't leave. Don't leave me. She'll be right. <laughs> Don't leave totally. me with this psycho. What the fuck? No, I do not remember this at all. Now, unfortunately, I think I'll never be able to forget it. Oh, this is the greatest. Obia. Right. Obia evil, I not evil, oh man. And what you is then? I from that next place. <laughs> You waiting here to take us? Like you're the bus driver to the No, man, I on holiday. Like, you didn't have Some to talk to her like pick. that. This is a very deliberate and unfortunate choice. Oh. He's just the goat. He is. Still love him. Still the greatest. Yeah. He had to do it. He had to do it. I don't think he did. I'm not sure that he did. <laughs> it's so bad. Doctor Lady, make it die. Mm -mm. Dr. Lady, make it iry. This being, this being got through and through me. Make it go, eh? I can't, sister. You can, mister. Take me to that next place. It's not your time, no. Make it time. You can't fool with the way things got to be. Please. Yeah, Maybe even name. if you try to lower his voice a little bit, it might have helped a small amount <laughs> N nothing not as much as not doing it yeah. but <laughs> nothing salvages this at all especially with the fucking highlights too it's just so it was a different time so unimaginably out of place and completely out of pocket out of orbit Gar uh, same as gary oldman in true romance it just had to happen no that one is like <laughs> 
that one is iconic now that I've like watched it. Do you know what that one is? Yeah, I know True yeah. Romance. So that one is iconic for a different reason because it's like self aware in the way that it, the character is designed. This is like, like, <laughs> white man touched this. Okay. Like every part of this is like very clearly to, to make him seem like he's popping off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like the viewer is not supposed to look at this and go, this is so funny. The viewer is supposed to watch this and go, wow, how incredible. He's doing a phenomenal job with this. Like he's really connecting with this yeah. woman. It's so fucking yeah. Hold on, I speak jive. Exactly. <laughs> it's got the it's got the most in, intense energy for no fucking reason. Oh Jesus! Oh, the food's almost here. I'm starving. <laughs> Brad Pitt stuns with perfect perfect patois. Was, this is what I like to call white boy swag. Uh, are you familiar with the? There's a there's a content creator on YouTube called Shauma. Mm -mm. Shauma, New York City, NYC. He is uh, a, a white dude who lived in China and actually does speak like really good Mandarin. But one of his things is like a lot of these like YouTube polyglot uh, uh, people, mm -hmm. polyglot uh, people is that like they'll go to like random places, learn a couple phrases and like try to say it in like what we think is a perfect accent if we mm -hmm. don't know the language. And like I recently found out because he tried to do it in Turkey that he actually isn't. Uh, you know, his accent is not as, as great as I thought it was because, you yeah. know, I'm a native speaker. So, um, but his, all, his, his clips have been memed to oblivion at this point where it's like, wait, he did one? No. Outside, they were like, white boy speaks Jamaican language, shocks Jamaicans. Oh, no. Like navy clothes almost? Like, oh, just t-shirt. Just Jamaican t-shirt. Jamaican t-shirt, oh. Yeah. Me never yet go a yard, but me don't like to buy some, <laughs> some Jamaican things, man. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Shama. Me and Frankie are here today in boys. Jamaica. Queens. Yeah, right, Jamaica Queens, which is actually a real place in New York. And it's called Jamaica Queens because there's a lot of Jamaicans here. Yeah. You may have heard that uh, Jamaicans have an interesting way of talking. Your man. Sometimes it gets mischaracterized. He, he is a... He is a really nice guy, and I think, <laughs> but there's a reason why everyone memed him into oblivion like this. White <laughs> boys speaks Jamaican language, shocks Jamaicans. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. He's in fucking Queens. <laughs> <laughs> why do you constantly do this? It's very rude. I expect it better from you when it comes to discussing this issue about this topic. Fuji and every Zahrani can't keep up with your shit. What? I don't even know what you're saying. Move on. <laughs> Characterized as like broken English or like bad yen t shirt. <laughs> Me and Frankie here are gonna go around today trying to survive for 24 hours in New York City speaking only Jamaican Papua. All right, let's do it. Can we man. do it? Yeah, I think so. All right, here we go. Hey, everybody, real quick before we get back to the video, just wanted to give an amazing thank you to our wonderful code Holiday. That's is oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's so cold. I was uh, thinking about my maternal grandmother was some of my people i don't really have ties to uh, other than food because man some of the food that my grandmother used to cook when she was still alive was just the best um but i don't have much connection beyond her to you are much more part. <laughs> well you are still much more connected than Xiaomi is that's <laughs> fair enough you're about to be shocked okay you're <laughs> Prepare to be shocked by a white boy who speaks Jamaican. <laughs> I'm getting these ones. Me don't like to buy a hat. Me don't like to buy a hat. How are you think? Oh. oh God, he went for it again. <laughs> He's like, maybe she didn't hear me. <laughs> Wait, are we? Are we think I'm... <laughs> All right, me don't like a hug. Yeah, yeah. Me... <laughs> All right, bless up, bless up. Me cool, me cool, nah, me a scarf. Me a scarf. Yeah. Um... Uh, he don't like to be like to buy a one, uh, a one he, he, he does pop off in Mandarin. That part is, at least he's got that for sure. <laughs> you act like you don't, is this Chet Hanks? This is the early <laughs> variant, <laughs> earlier variant. Why do you insist on showing all of your guests cringe? It's just a part of the process. It's I fun. had to do it to him. It's fun. I had to do it to him, you know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay it this is it's so bad anyway that this is you know shalma okay 
I don't know how the fuck we got here. We were talking about Bobby Grim from Reaper. Flapjack. That's one that I haven't really thought of. Bobby from Flapjack. Flapjack was such a great show. Marceline, the Vampire Queen in Adventure Time. Huh. She's a daughter of the ruler of the Nidosphere and a black human woman. Her complexion is basically the same as her father's, but only that few fool you. Our favorite vampire queen is also a strong, independent, effortlessly cool, queer black woman. Tobias from Gumball. Every, I haven't watched a lot of these things. I haven't watched Gumball. Every animal in the princess and the frog. <laughs> yep. Tracks. The Lions and the Lion King. Absolutely. Let's face it. The only reason why 90% of the characters in this movie were animals is because of Disney's dumb tendency to make BIPOC characters non-human for the majority of their films. <laughs> Don't get it twisted, though. Lewis and it could definitely give a human term for players to run for their money. Lions and Lion King. The hyenas and Lion King. <sighs> Penguins and Happy Penguins Feet. And happy feet. King, oh, Julian King Julian and the 100%. other lemurs. Okay, this is not as anime focused. This is all uh, Western animation. Yuck. No, I'm, kidding. <laughs> I'm not one of those guys. Okay, so there isn't a part two of this panel discussion because I mm. really wanted to. Wait, let me see. Wait, maybe we can find it. And, Bill Picklet's uh damn she posts a lot of TikToks. Okay. Every One Piece character based on real people. What is this? Wait. Django's based on Steven Tyler? I thought Django. A lot of was... people think that it was Michael Jackson. And yeah. there are some Especially in Django's like OG costume. Yeah. It's, it's pretty smooth criminal. Eneru is is that that tracks 100 percent Yeah. Thank you, 34 MKD50 with the 50 big ones. Jackson. I mean, really? Look at his skin. Uh, that's Look at his. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Late stage Michael Jackson. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that one is an obvious one. Very, yeah. Whoa, Trafalgar Law, Valentino Rossi. What? Really? I don't. I mean, I don't know enough about Valentino Rossi. Rossi. I teared up at the end of the arc when he's like, um, when he's talking about how he blinded himself and he, he's like, I wish I could, what does he say? He says like, I wish I could see it. Like you must've been very kind or something to, mm -hmm. to Luffy. God, that was so beautiful. I got fucking chills. Hold on. Oh, I'm gonna go grab it right now. Okay. No source on most of these. Oh yeah. He says, you look like sure. a kind person. Such a good fucking line. Yeah, I knew the Dr. Hawk back one. I do believe is real. You didn't that the the, the Gorosei are based I, off of like these real figures. This I have wait, seen. Wait, really? Yeah. Okay, so this. Oh my god, Gorbachev. Oh my god. Oh, that does I make mean, look sense. At it, it's, it's like oh undeniable when you look at them side by side. Oh my god. 
No way. Wait, who's Ita Itagaki Taisuke? Is he also fucking like socialist or some shit? I'm gonna lose my mind. Okay. Um, this is Lahmajun. Okay. Have you have you ever had Lahmajun? Mm -mm. No. Okay. This is like one of the most important Turkish foods of all time. Okay. Okay. And this place does it very well. It's like pretty pretty close to traditional. Um so the way you're supposed to eat this, it's not Turkish pizza. People call it Turkish pizza or Armenian pizza or whatever, but like it's not. It's not pizza at all. There's no cheese. It is minced meat with spices mm -hmm. and like a little peppers and, and, and onions and things like that. Sounds good. Okay, I got a lot of food. I always yeah, I do this one. When, whenever I get oh, we got some pide. Um yeah. So you use to dip into your into some of the appetizers. Okay. Oh shit. Uh, put it over here. This one for you. Thank you. Okay. Um this is Esme. It's a spicy uh it's like a spicy app. Uh it's like almost like a salad. Mm -hmm. Like tomato, tomato paste. Um um, but yeah, here it is. Um, you don't mind spice, right? It's not super <laughs> no, spicy. No, no, no. Okay, good. Love it. Here, let me put it over there. Uh, and then, I mean, I got myself food that I always eat every day. Tzatziki, obviously. I'm mm -hmm. sure you've had that. Yes. Before. Oh, here's the the fixins for mm -hmm. the lahmacun. Um, you have maidanos, which is uh, what is this called? Uh, is it what is what is Maidanos in English chat? There's some Turks in here, surely. Cilantro? No, parsley. Pars oh yeah, I was gonna say it's not okay. flat enough to be okay. cilantro. Okay. So you're supposed to mm -hmm. and you can do this yourself, or I can make it for you if you want. But in the La Majin, you're supposed to put the onions mm -hmm. and tomatoes, unless you have an issue with any of these things. But onions, tomatoes, and the and the parsley. Uh, and then you, uh, put the, you squeeze the lemon on top of it and then you roll it up and that's how you consume it. Oh, huh. Okay. Okay. So that's how you're supposed to eat it. And then last but not least, I got myself chicken that I have every day that I weigh and I'm going to be weird about it. Um, but this is Beite. Abi, önce sade bir tatlı saydın. Yok. This is beyti. Um, it's got tomato paste. So it's got tomato paste. Uh, it's uh, wrapped up Adana, basically Adana kebab, which is, again, minced meat. It's like köfte, like a meatball kind of, almost like a long, long way um, that is wrapped in a lavash that then, oh my God, my mouth is watering. Then, then you put a uh, tomato, uh, like a tomato sauce on top of, and you're supposed to eat it with the, uh, with the, uh, uh, the, the yogurt in the middle as well. Here you go. That's yours. And then, what is this? Oh, I got hummus as well. Classic. That one is just, uh, that comes with the food because it's free. Right. Four orders over $40. Okay, so. Can we see the not pizza again? Sure. Um, Do you want to, do you want to make it yourself? Here you go. Lahmacun right here. Here it is. And you put it over there as well. It's like, you can put it on top of the. You can pull. You you can you can throw that on the ground. The 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 sweater. No no no. The sweater you can put on the ground. Yeah, there you go. And then just put it there if you want. But yeah, lahmacun is like probably getting cold, so I would tr I would suggest starting first. with that one. Yeah. If it's not pizza, why is it a pizza box? Because, uh, dude, there, it's probably the most effective way of uh, most effective means of transportation. Okay, but it has nothing to do with pizza at all. You've never had hummus before. It sounds fire. That's crazy. <laughs> what? How the fuck have you not had hummus before? Valentino Rossi is nicknamed Il Dottore as the doctor. Oh, that oh, kind of makes okay. sense. Okay. 
My Turkish restaurant calls it very thin Turkish pizza. Yeah, because the reason why Turks call it whatever the fuck, like pizza in America, is because they want to sell it to Americans. And most Americans need to, like, identify it as something that they've consumed before, something close to what they've consumed before, or else they won't try it. So that's why they do it, to trick Americans into trying a delicacy. Where the Idon at? Idon, in all of my experiences, is oftentimes, like, the, the least appreciated part for the uninitiated. So I don't even do Idon anymore when I'm... When I'm uh, getting people that have never like had a lot of turkish food to try turkish food for the first time what is that one idon is uh is a yogurt drink so turks originally come from the steppes uh like in uh, turkic people come from uh asia and therefore because they were nomadic early on uh they would travel a lot and they would make use of horses so dairy, due to horse milk, was a major part of Turkish cuisine. Mm -hmm. And um, Aydan, and, and as you can see, there's like yogurt literally in the, uh, in the middle of that thing as well, in the middle of the Beyti. Like dairy and yogurt is a massive part of, of Turkish food. He crushing weed? No, he's actually pulling the parsley's like stems, parsley which is you're all. supposed to do that. He's doing it. He's a natural. He's a natural Turk. I like the Turk. Yeah, I didn't even tell him that, and he's doing it. And you're supposed to do that, so he he got it right. I've yet to have good Turkish food in LA. This place is called here. I'll I order from here every day. I already I already eat here all the time. I already eat from here all the time, but. Uh, this place is called Levant, and it's incredible. I think that might even be like Lebanese. Maybe they're not Turkish, but they are. This is the most consistent, most faithful food, uh, like Turkish food I've had in the United States of America. Oh, not just LA. Are you shitting me? Iran is the best uh, thing ever. I'm Polish, by the way. Maybe that's why. Lamont, Lamont is called Levant. Calls it Turkish. Yeah, well, it is Turkish. The food, a lot of the food is like, I guess, Levantine food. How tightly or loosely do you roll this? Um, you you can. Does it matter? It doesn't really matter. See, I knew you wouldn't like to. I that's why I asked. You do your own thing. You don't like tomatoes. I'm not a big like. No, it's a all tomato good. paste. A tomato like this. I'm excited to dive into. Yeah, old tomatoes. Not my thing. No, I, I feel that. A lot of people don't fuck with that. Or they get, like, uh, cringe about... Um, they don't like, uh, you know, raw onions, too. Oh, I love raw onions. Yeah, me too. Grind the whole thing. What does Matt think about the new X-Men show and the woke complaints, especially being familiar with the Marvel brand? There's woke complaints about everything. Nerds are fucking unbearable. You don't have to Firstly, speak while you're eating if you're uncomfortable. Very good. Nice spice level to it. Yeah. A little bit of spice. I, lahmacun is the shit. I wish I could have it more, but it's like too much, too many calories for me. Yeah, I'll finish, then I will answer that X-Men question. Okay. While we're, while we're actually... The reason why I wanted to show you CJ the Champ is because um, he's... A, he's I love his channel. I watched some of his stuff before. Um, you watch Baki, right? Uh, not the no. You have not watched Baki. Baki is a that's a blind spot. For oh me. my god, I you haven't have watched to. Baki. Okay, are any of these? Do any of these pique your fancy? Escanor from Light Up Sketches of Black Forces, Tokyo Revengers, Black Air Force, Energy the Anime, Madara. That's interesting. Omni Man has black, black Air Force I mean, activity. Very, very much so. Look how he just duck slaps Rex, bruh. I enjoyed that <laughs> way too much. Play that shit again. Here, we'll watch this while we eat. It'll be a good introduction to his content. Ah, 
right y'all so i watched invincible and after finishing this show i only got one thing to say bro this man omni man has pure black air force activity yes damn it i said it j jonah jameson has finally showed us his true power my god almighty peter parker your ass best get to stepping because j jonah jameson is not playing any more games bro but anyways yo this man omni man is a pure savage like i have never seen something like this before and after watching this, I might have to do something, bro. I just might have to put this man in the round table of Black Air Force activity. Now, I know Invincible is not an anime, but pff, shit, we might have to make an exception. So y'all already know I got the evidence on deck. And we will see if this man is worthy to be sat at the round table of Black Air Force activity. But before we start our investigation, let me go ahead and give out that spoiler warning real quick. If you have not seen Invincible, do not watch this video because you will be spoiled. But like for real though, if you have not seen this show, I highly recommend recommend watching it in all honesty it's one of the best shows i've seen in a minute but anyways <clears throat> exhibit a this man murked the entire bootleg justice league or the guardians of the globe whatever the fuck you want my nigga that's a bootleg justice league i mean look at some of these niggas bro we got bootleg flash bootleg wonder woman bootleg batman bootleg aquaman but he's a whole ass musty ass stank ass fish then we got bootleg martian manhunter and then i don't know who the fuck this supposed to be i'm just calling green bitch then we got this nigga i don't know who the fuck this supposed to be either but yo this man omni man hold every single last one of they asses dog like look what he did to bootleg flash bro he crushed his head slowly and while he was doing that he was trying to punch him but he was breaking his hands while doing it and what makes this worse this shit probably felt like an eternity for him so he just face plays walmart woman and he grabs bootleg batman out of the fucking air and slams his ass on the canvas and then green bitch just got annihilated like he put his whole hand through her face then used her as a body shield then he just collabors aqua nigga and got his ass ready to be stuffed in a fresh can of tuna hey but loki though they did start Start jumping them though. Fight back, nigga! Fight back, nigga! Fight back! Fight back! <laughs> but then he rips off Martian Manhunter. Good checks this nigga so hard he blew his back out. Sent Walmart woman back to the great value aisle. And sent this nigga pack up back to Valhalla. So yeah, uh, that's exhibit A. Uh, on to exhibit B. This man destroyed a entire alien civilization. So these aliens are attacking Earth and shit, right? So this man, Omni-Man, comes in, right? Makes them go back to their portal and retreat. But Omni-Man said, fuck that, nigga, y'all ain't going nowhere. So he flew through their portal to their planet and murked the entire civilization. And he did this shit in like the matter of seconds. And to top it off, bruh, they literally made him a portal so he could leave and go back to Earth. But to thank him for that, he decided to drop a big ass rock on their ass then just leave <laughs> bro and the thing is bro in this episode he said something that should have sent off red flags for like everybody you don't seem to understand earth isn't yours to conquer <laughs> This man said, Earth isn't yours to conquer. So in my head, I was like, hmm, wait a damn minute. Something ain't right here. But Lord have mercy, bro. This shit was just getting started. But before we go into exhibit C, our final exhibit, we're going to take a little detour real quick because we got a little special exhibit. So without further ado, let's run exhibit S. <laughs> We gotta talk about Battle Beast. All right, I know this is a Omni-Man video, but y'all know damn well I was gonna talk about this nigga. This man is a absolute savage. This dude literally bodied everybody's shit. This dude literally came to Earth only because he thought they had worthy opponents, bruh. Damn, this guy's good.